Four play presented by Barstool Sports. Uh, not a morning podcast. It's fucking six fifty two <laughs> in the morning where I am right now. It's seven fifty two in the morning where you guys are right now. I'm in Kansas. Um, we're not a morning podcast. So if this what happens in the next hour and a half, two hours, however long we do this bullshit shindig that we're doing here, sounds crazy and rambling and a little bit out of sync. That's because we're not a morning podcast and it's extremely early in the morning. The sun, gentlemen, here in Kansas doesn't come up for an hour. How about that? Dude. Does it come up till 7.45 in the morning here? Dude, we've done early podcasts before, and we've talked about how we're not a morning podcast. And, and on all of those podcasts, at least for me personally, I have woken up early enough where I could shower, splash some water on my face. Sometimes I'll walk to the Starbucks and I'll get a coffee. This podcast in particular, I woke up four minutes ago. <sighs> you sound I, terrible. I you just, I woke terrible. up four minutes. I, you know... It was a late night. It was it was the bachelor night, so we got to do cutting stems, and then we do the podcast afterwards. No excuses, but I, I got into bed pretty late, and I made the decision. I made the call before I went to bed. I was like, "We're pushing it to the max. Like we're just gonna sleep as much as we possibly can, and then we're gonna hop on this podcast." So that's what I did. I will say I feel better than I thought I would now that I'm up and I'm talking to you guys. But as of four to five minutes ago, I was unconscious. Got that groggy voice so do i now that i speak for the first time in the morning um oh you sound yeah. terrible too it's oh, a little man. it's just a little it's a little too early to talk golf with the boys you know it's just you know we, we do this show for hundreds of thousands of people whatever the number is and it's like mm. i'm not prepared to speak about golf right now like you you know <laughs> it's just i'm not this isn't a morning like radio show like i'm not that guy it's like <laughs> gonna take you on your commute from you know your house what do we to do work? if we were a morning if we were a morning radio show what would we like prank call people prank call hotels and shit and pretend like the pope stayed there like what would we what would we do yeah we like z100 z100 is the goat morning show new york elvis duran and the z morning zoo um uh, <laughs> they were just un- talking about right now they were unbelievable man like z100 i mean they're still unbelievable but like the 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 golden years of morning radio was Z100, Elvis Duran, man. They just they had all these guys. They had Froggy, and he'd do prank calls, and they would call people live on the show and mess with them. And you just like it got you to work. Like when I was going to high school, you turned on Z100 and you laughed your ass off until you, like you just couldn't believe like you felt like an adult because like the adults were talking about funny stuff and you were on your way to high school and you finally got a car. Like, like that's, that's, that's what I remember of morning radio. And then obviously you have like the, uh, you know, Boomer and Carton, those guys, I don't know how they do it. How the fuck does Boomer, no, it's not Carton anymore. It's Boomer and Geo. Sorry. But how the fuck does Boomer size and do what he does, man? That guy works more than anyone on the planet. Well, I mean, morning radio is, is an insane lifestyle. You got to get up at like, 3 a.m. and then you go into the studio and you do prep and you do this whole thing like we only see morning radio for the couple hours that they're on but that's like that's like looking at a glacier you just see the tip of it but under it they've been working for hours and that's same that's like like the today show i feel like they get up at like half uh, midnight and then they start preparing and they do makeup and they do all this bullshit and then they're just on tv from like 4 a.m. until 7 a.m. or whatever it is. They've been up for six or seven hours. What kind of what kind of world is that? What kind of life is that? I don't, like, like when do you doing? go to sleep? When do you go to sleep? I, I've never understood that, right? Like, you how sleep does at Boomer, five? How does Boomer Esiason, right. like, no, like, and he does Sunday football, right? Like, he's on the studio. He does, like, he does the NFL shows. So, like, how does this guy do it? I, um, I don't know. <laughs> It's it's really an, it's really an impressive thing, but I remember when I was working as a security guard and I would do third shift, which was 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. You would have to go to bed at two or three in the afternoon and wake up at nine and then shower and get ready. And you're not even a person, like you're no. not even part of society at that point because you're sleeping when everyone else is up. You're awake when everybody else is sleeping, and you you just never see what's actually going on and it's 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 honestly a very strange existence think about how unsecure that corn factory was when you're fucking sleeping at 2 30 in the afternoon you show up like a zombie you don't know what's going on you can't well, see what's up what's down 
the move Anybody at that point, the, that the move at that point is then you just mainline as much black coffee as you can drink, and then I'm ready to I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to do anything that they need me to do. But your your brain is is fried for most of it. Yes. Sorry to the people that usually listen to this show for the energy and to wake them up. Right, like they listen to this show on Tuesday mornings or Thursday mornings, um, expecting us to keep them occupied and entertained as they are tired on their way to work at six o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning. Unfortunately, this morning we're going to be tired and remind you that you should go back to bed and not make it to work and like, just turn around and go back home. It's not worth it. You know what I mean? Like we have that, we have the wrong vibes this morning. Like I'm ready to crawl back under my covers. Can we, can we just, just tell people this show is going to suck? Don't listen to this show. It's going to suck. What are we going to talk about? I have no idea. Like, what? I've done nothing. I've just, I woke up two minutes ago. What do you want me to talk about? <laughs> we can talk about Owens. You guys can yeah, talk about know. Owens. Uh, yeah. 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 Owens Mixers. Um, really good product. You poured it. I had transfusion um, yesterday. You guys wouldn't believe the hour that I went to sleep last night, but we'll get into that later. Uh, about three o'clock, 3 a.m. I went to sleep. See, Dude, there's a chipping am. green. There's a chipping green right here. I'm talking right outside my uh, little window here, and they got a fire pit out there. So you're at the fire pit. We're at. Pra- I'm at Prairie Dunes in in uh, Hutchinson, Kansas. They got a fire pit and a putting green and a chipping green out there. They got this little pyramid of balls that's just taunting you. It's just looking at you, chirping you, like, "Oh, you guys won't do a fucking chipping contest before you go to sleep. I bet you won't do it. I bet you won't do it." So you're walking off the green. Walking off the fire pit, you walk right by this green. Next thing you know, you're in a two and a half, three hour chip off with a bunch of the fellas. And it's 3 oh. a.m. and you got to do a podcast with you morons at 645. And here we are trying to get through this. But Owens, okay, great day yesterday. Played 36 holes out here. Um, nothing better than a transfusion, delicious transfusion cocktail. Instead of going through all the hoopla of different ingredients, trying to get the uh, the pores right, some people would throw too much grape juice, not enough grape juice. You could totally over-dominate the drink with grape juice, and it becomes just a grape drink. No, you don't have to worry about any of that because we got Owen's Mixers in the transfusion can, perfect recipe, pour it in with vodka, and you've got yourself an awesome cocktail. we got Palomas, which Lurch loves, who he's not on the show because he's on an airplane right now. We're all going to be on airplanes today, too, by the way, which is outrageous. So that's why we're doing this at 6 in the morning, if you couldn't figure that out. But go to owensmixers.com. All right, go check out the store locator. Go to the local Kroger, CVS, all these great uh, retail stores where you can pop in, grab Transfusion Mix, grab Owens Mix, put it in. They got uh, Margarita Mix that you can use. They got grapefruit and lime. They got um, all kinds of good stuff. So go check out Owens. We love them. Go Puff, same-day shipping. Amazon, next-day shipping. Owensmixers.com, pour it in, favorite liquor of choice, awesome cocktail, they make it very easy. Yeah, they got a, a, a fucking chipping green right out here, so next thing I knew, I was deep in one because we were doing a, a chip-off, which, credit to your boy here, I won um, four out of six chip-offs with six different guys we had, maybe seven, no, I think we had six guys, and we did six different um, chipping contests where... We just did elimination. So we started with six guys. Anybody, uh, everybody starts chips. The uh, first person that gets out picks the next chip for everyone. And you just go till there's one person left. I won four out of six and I lost yeah. the championship in another one. And I lost, I finished third the next time. You do a lot of chipping, man. You're a pretty good chipper. Really good chipper. You're probably on par with like, you probably chip just as much as pro golfers. I mean, at that point, I don't know how much more anyone can chip. I think they chip a lot. You don't think like you a chip a lot. You don't think you chip at the same level as you think um uh, Colin Morikawa hits more chips per day than you? Way more. I think way they more? do like way more. Well, let's see how many chips are you getting off per day, Riggs? Per day? Yeah. Like in a practice setting? Are yeah, you, you hit chips every many. day? No. Okay. Oh. Not even close. Okay. Okay. I mean, I do post the daily nine, but a lot of times I rush to a course. I run out to a practice screen or something. I put nine balls down. I set up a tripod. I make sure I got like G4 and all my good stuff out there. I hit nine fucking chips. I take everything down and I leave. Right. Yeah. But even a lot of times like uh, that, I'll do putting or I'll do um, a range thing where I'll hit ball. So on those days, I'm not hitting any chips at all. And a lot of times that I'll do the daily nine chips, 
I am trying to work on stuff, but I'm just trying to get through it so that we can fucking post this. And when I, I think the better the product is a lot of times when I'm actually have time to like sit down and focus on the chipping. And there are days when that happens, when I can really try to chip. But I've said to you guys many times that growing up, you know, my dad loved to chip and putt and liked to go to the range more than he ever liked to uh, actually go out and play golf. So we would chip and putt a decent amount. And if I get time now to just go to a course and fuck around, even if I'm not filming anything, if I'm just hanging out, a lot of times I'll just chip for, you know, an hour or two. But I think that Callamore Cower and company, I think they do that every fucking day. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I guess it's just deceiving. You see you chip every day, but it probably is not. I mean, I ask you the same question people ask Dave, like, what do you do with the rest of the pizza? Like He's like, I don't eat the whole thing. I just eat the slice. <laughs> Give it away. That's right. It's pretty much like that, where people are like, man, you really do grind all the time. And I'm like, no, I know. I, I know. It's just like kind of a video, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's not, yeah. you know. And now occasionally I will, and and I do like to do that as practice if I'm ever in a situation where I'm actually practicing golf. Um, but, you know, we're on the road a lot. We're, we're traveling around. It's either Barstool Classic or we're filming shit or we're at a tournament. It's not like I have a ton of time or as much time as people would think, but occasionally I do get a good amount of uh, – practice time and when i do get that i like to chip more than i like to do anything else like if i stand on the range and hit balls if i can hit if i hit 15 or 20 drivers you know i might i might get to a point where i can hit eight or ten pretty good ones but you know how it is you don't want to lose it so then by the time you get to the the 16th driver you start spraying them you're like i'm putting this fucking thing away i don't want to leave this range being like man i couldn't hit driver anymore so i'll, I'll just go chip and putt or something yeah totally Definitely chip more than the average person and then not even close to the pro. That's what I think. I think it would be shocking how much they chip. I think they're chipping for like two or three hours a day. I think yeah, they're just insane. chipping. Yeah. That's something that I'm not prepared for. Someone messaged me. Actually, a lot of people messaged me about Squid Game. I want to give an update on that. Oh, yeah. Um, I thought the best response was from, and now I'm just going to not read his name. I'm going to forget. Basically, he said, no, you can't say he got to come up with his name. Man, I'm not going to find him, man. There's too many. You could could just make it up and no one would know. (sighs) I feel weird doing that, though. That's fair. Got to be honest. I don't think I'm going to find it, man. I don't think I'm going to find it. Anyway. is, Is his name Tyler? It wasn't Tyler. Okay. No, I think he said it was Tyler. Yeah, I think before we hopped on, you were like, I got this good idea from Tyler about the Squid Game thing. Anyway, let me tell you the idea, and then I'll find his name. The idea is essentially that um, when you call out Squid Game, you are now challenging that person to the same shot. Okay, so we all get, like, one Squid Game around. And let's say, like, Riggs is super confident that Lurch is going to miss a 15-footer, but also very confident that he's going to make it. So, like, essentially, if I think that Trent's never going to get out of a bunker, this is an easier one. I can just say squid game, and I go in there with him with an extra ball. And if I get – if he doesn't get out and I do, he loses his the club he used for the rest of the round. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, now, the opposite is, like, if Trent gets out and I don't, I now lose my club. So, there's a lot of – um pros and cons to it where like you're never going to ask the person for a 50 foot putt because then you have to hit the 50 foot putt got it so so there will be these funny times where like lurch is standing over a five foot putt and you're just like squid game and you know you're making it and he misses it he loses his putter for the rest of the round and he's done oh that is so that's that, ideal that and is if you ideal. both but if you both make it you just go on you go on your way I think you lose your squid game call. I think there will be many opportunities on a tee shot, right? Like if Lurch is striping his driver and it's a tough tee shot, wind off the left or something, and he knows I don't have any chance of hitting the fairway or barely, he could squid games me, you're saying. I missed the fairway. He steps up with his driver. He hits the fairway. My driver is now out of my bag for the rest of the round. <laughs> yeah, but so I think you get a chance to like, all right, like now you switch to a club that you know you're going to hit the fairway, right? Like it puts more pressure on you to hit the fairway. Where if he's just like, because I don't know if he can call like, it on the- I like it. I like yeah. it. I, no, I'm in. I think what you just described is amazing because if you, you basically have to validate it. Having to validate it is another level and that's impressive in that like you're not just chirping me saying I can't make a 50 footer, can't hit a driver, the wind's out. Like then you have to step up do it, validate it, and once you validate it, 
I'm fucked for the rest of the round. And that's right. truer to the show and the game. Everyone participates. Nobody, you don't, nobody gets one challenge and the other person doesn't have to do it. Everybody has to participate. So True. making the person who's challenging participate in whatever it may be, a bunker shot, a putt, whatever, that is truer to, to the squid game. So I like it as well. Tyler. Ah, that wasn't his good name, idea, man. Tyler. Really is that the, is, Tyler. Did you get any other outlandish uh, suggestions that you sort of like that you could maybe workshop a little or no? No, I honestly, I mean, people were saying you got to break the club and like, you know, right. it got, it got crazy. It got chaotic. Um, <laughs> is my phone just buzzing? Like who has their phone on ding like that? Um, An old person. That's a huge, uh, as a guy that travels a lot, goes to airports, every person over, I would say 60 has their phone at maximum volume making mode all, all of the time. No, but like, just all of the time. Totally. And you can hear them typing texts like click, 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 click. And then evil. you look at them texting and their, their, their text is uh, uh, one word takes up the entire screen because it's so large and their phone just making noises. And you're like, you know, you could live a life where all those little dings and noises are just basically aggregated and they're kept private until a moment when you would like to check your phone. And then they're all still just on there and there's a, a, a system where they will notify you of what those people wanted to say to you. But it, as the dings roll in, man, like we're losing <laughs> our fucking sanity over here. You guys need to calm down. The old people need to calm down with the phone. I think that's the, the modern version of the, the Seinfeld joke where he's talking about there's, you reach a certain age where when you're backing out of the driveway, you don't, you don't even look, you're just like, I'm old. <laughs> I'm going like deal with it. That the version of that now is like I'm old, my phone's super loud, and I'll be writing texts that are huge. Fucking deal with it. It is chaos. When my dad's on his phone, it's chaos. It's legitimate. It there's noises. He's speaking into the phone. He doesn't type. Literally, what my dad does when he texts is he sits there on the couch and stares at the phone, <laughs> and will voice to text. You know the easiest text ever, like where where for dinner. Or something like that. Where are we going for dinner? And then it'll mess it up. And then he goes in and will select the thing that got wrong, delete it with his finger, and then speak the new word. Right? So there's so many more movements that I've argued with him where it's like you're now doing more than just typing it out. Like you're finding the mistake, you're hitting it, you're selecting it, you're back it, you're backing it up, and then now you're hitting the boy the button again to further speak into the phone. You need to just type it out. You have to type it out. <laughs> What's his reason for that? Is it is it easier? Does he think that he's using cutting edge texting technology and he wants <laughs> to both, be a part of that world? Com- when, both combined. When it's funny that like <laughs> voice texting is sort of like it's it's to a higher level than actual texting, but o- the only people that use it are old people. Like there's no young people like being like, look how awesome this voice text is. We're all just hammering away at the keys. But it, it, I've seen some of the text, the voice text that your dad sends through to you, and they're just most of them don't even make sense. Yeah, I'm telling you, if you tried to do uh, voice texting, or if your phone even like read back to you a voice, te- my dad would pull out a shotgun, I think, and just shoot the phone. Like he would just shoot the phone into a thousand pieces. Like, he can't, he can't have it. My dad, my dad uh, texts, and credit to him because he has realized that if we're all in a group setting, family setting. And he, you know, we're talking about a plan or a friend that he wants to update or, or send a chirp to. He's big, like, chirp texter now that he'll just give me his phone and be like, hey, you need to text this to him because it'll take me, like, we'll be here. Like, it'll be an hour ordeal situation. But he kind of, he texts like Trent types. He uses one hand, the index finger, and he just holds the phone fully with the other hand. So he'll hold his phone with his left hand. And in his right hand, just with his index finger, he'll just poke at it like a bird for, you know, however long the text message takes. And he's very focused on getting it right. And he's he's obsessed with the group text or the family group text, which I love. So every time he's with like my our nephew, Robbie, it is just like text after text, picture after picture, which is actually awesome. Because I think the only thing he ever texts is the, our group, our family group text about what's going on. So him, he has very much evolved and figured that out. But every time he sends a text, I can't help but think about how long it took him to actually formulate 
and send that picture and that text. And the fact that he'll accompany it with a photo is really amazing at this point from where we started. Yeah, yeah I mean, that text took him. That's that means a lot for coming from him because you know how to, how long it took. Totally, it was like for fucking fifteen minutes. He sat there grinding over this text. He had to backspace, and the fact that he gets it as right as he gets it at this point, and I don't blame him. Like they didn't grow up with it. They're not committed to it, right? Like a lot of a lot of times, they've just been adverse to it the whole time. They're just like this fucking thing, this phone. It's ruining everything. I can't, like my kids, my grandkids, they won't even talk at dinner because of this goddamn phone. Now you're supposed to embrace that thing. He's like, so they've had that the whole time for the last 10 years. But regardless, there's no reason for them to have their phone be as loud as humanly possible. Like anytime, anytime, I think my mom or my dad, and my mom listens to every show, so I love you, mom. But every time they get a call, it is like a nuclear alert is going (laughs) off. When that thing, it's and it's ringing and they're like trying to find it and they thought it was in their front left like coat pocket but it's in the right and you're just sitting here like man we're gonna do this all day long every time you get a phone call this is crazy time. right think about every mind. time think about every time we get an amber alert you're like oh my oh my god like oh my god oh my god someone's lost let's find that child and but it's for them it's it's a call from Riggs. it's a call from anybody it's just a normal everyday thing. It's a horrifying sound. It's so loud. Dude, my dad's got his on um, just like the house phone ring. It's just an actual. Oh. <laughs> it's it's as loud as it can be, and you can't. You're like you gotta answer it. You're jumping <laughs> to the phone because you can't believe what's happening around just, you. So you I will say I, that. he <laughs> he is definitely. Um, outrageous with his phone but he's good at it like he knows how to search the web like he he'll send me links he can go on tiktok and find something funny like he knows every he finds our podcast every day he watches all the youtube videos he's able to go to the next youtube video send links so he does know the technology but he's definitely like still loves the loud noises the voice to text so he almost enjoys the phone more than i do i almost i almost wish i enjoyed my phone as much as he did Right. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, because... You to utilize all the technology on it. I don't talk to Siri. I don't say, hey, Siri, what is this? Like, I don't do any of that stuff. Well, and also, they went 60, 50 or 60 years without it. Like, we're so conditioned to it that we, we look at these things and we're like, yeah, 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 big deal. It has every answer in the whole world in it. And they're like, can you believe that this thing has every answer in the whole world in it? Like, my dad, um, in a group setting, in a family group setting, he is just taken on the role as fact checker. So like when me and my brother, and my dad are watching a football game, say, and we're, it's an NFL game and it's going on. And we're like, man, where did that guy go to college without even having to say anything? He'll just pick up his phone <laughs> and immediately start to Google that guy and where he went to college. And then he'll just call it out. He'll say Michigan state. And we'll be like, Oh, that's what I thought. And then we'll just keep it rolling until the next question comes out. And he loves that. He's like our, he's like our Tony reality at these, family yeah. events where he just checks every fact and we don't have to do it. And he just calls it out and we keep it moving. But the parents love the cell phones. They just don't totally know how to control the volume of them. The big thing we'll be watching football at uh, my girlfriend's house and her dad will go. Um, he has a little Alexa underneath the TV. It's right <laughs> under the TV. So every question, Oh, like you're saying, Oh, like uh, who do the giants play next week? Alexa. And then, the voice from the the, the 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 sound from the TV will sometimes interrupt it, mm-hmm. and it's like a it's a ten minute thing where it's like, and you see the light like the little blue Alexa thing will like not get it and it'll turn red and it'll be like please repeat that I'll be like Alexa what <laughs> just like <laughs> they're playing the Seahawks you know what I mean you're just like I right. know it I know it now because I just typed in all I typed in was GI into Google and it like already finished it I hit it schedule came up. I know exactly who they're playing. I know every single game they've ever played for their for their entire franchise history. We don't need to talk to that piece. That that. Yeah, that my my guy. dad used to be an Alexa guy, but he had too many like run-ins <laughs> with Alexa that he was like, "I'm not doing this anymore. I'm using my phone." They're listening to us sleep. <laughs> he just fucking <laughs> throws it out in the garbage. Uh, do your guys' parents do the thing too, where you know their phone, like you said, they get a phone call and it's ringing and it's just the most insane alert system of all time, and they'll be like. After two or three rings, they'll be like, is that, is that mine? You guys think that's mine? <laughs> yeah. And you're like, you know, I'm not trying to be a dick, but I, like process elimination, that 
I, I've known that either, was yours. It's either you or the local fire department. Se- I don't know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that's not yours. Like it's been going crazy now for right. three rings. Like, who did you think that was? Dad, that, if that's you not know. your phone, then we have an issue. Because... Then there's a nuclear attack that's happening. Yeah, and we got to get it. We got to get in the basement. Right. <laughs> oh um, my gosh. Oh, Blue Nile. Um, Blue Nile is the original online jeweler. Since 1999, they've helped millions of couples create their perfect engagement ring. Blue Nile is committed to ensuring that the highest ethical standards are observed when sourcing diamonds and jewelry. Each diamond is GIA graded, which allows you to view the unique qualities, carat weight um, to color or cut, and be confident of the quality you are buying. Blue Nile is different from their competitors. They don't mark up to mark down, meaning that Blue Nile is uh, BlueNile.com's everybody's everyday uh, prices and competitive to other online retailers' sale price. They're your friend. They're your friend in the diamond and the jewelry business. We've talked on this show before, speaking of stories, you know, about um, one of our parents had a little bit of an issue with a jeweler. That won't happen uh-huh. when you go to uh, Blue Nile. No. <laughs> we've, really, we've really cornered the market on sponsors that help us because we're idiots, which mm-hmm. I think, which I appreciate, like mortgages, diamonds, um, health like i and this is one of the big ones because i don't know anything about carrots anything about weight rigs you've been saying words that i've just never even heard before so i'm, I'm appreciative of, of blue nile in that respect yeah if you're having uh, trouble choosing blue nile has jewelry experts on hand 24 7 they're available via phone or chat to help you find or build a memorable gift at every single budget you pick from a vast selection of preset diamonds and gemstone jewelry blue nile offers endless options ready to ship same day, so it's very quick if you'd like it to be quick. Mark the moments that matter with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And for play, podcast listeners get $50 off of $500. This podcast exclusive offer includes engagement rings, so be sure to uh, jump on the opportunity. Holidays are coming up. It's kind of an engagement period. A lot of people get engaged. Use the code for play. That's one word, F-O-R-E-P-L-A-Y. Um, plus every order is insured. It ships free and arrives in discreet packaging that will not give away what's inside. You won't give away the secret so you can shop stress-free and find your, uh, your forever peace. Go to bluenile.com today. Use the code for play. That's one word F O R E P L A Y. You get $50 off of a $500 order. Again, that is bluenile.com. Use the code for play. Um, all right, so I'm in Kansas. So if, if everybody recalls, we played um, Jake Owen, Morgan Wallen, Darius Rucker, and our guy Hardy, um, who's begging for us to come to a show, by the way. Hardy is just chopping at the bit for the fellas to show up to a show. I haven't been to a show yet since the world reopened, which is crazy to say. I feel like you guys have done a couple of shows. Frankie's about to star in a show, which is one of the craziest things that exists in this universe. Tomorrow. Um, tonight, yeah, we went- when this podcast comes out, Denver... Are you ready for Col- that? No. No. Okay. All right. Absolutely yeah. not. But Denver, Colorado, before we get into the Kansas stuff, Denver, Colorado, um, we're playing outside Coors Field at View House Ballpark. If you're in the Denver area, if you're in Colorado, make it. All you got to do is show up. It's going to be a great day. We're basically doing a watch party for the Broncos Browns with Dave, Big Cat, the whole crew is going to be there. Um, you're going to be able to see everyone as they, Dave's going to be betting a lot of money on all these games responsibly, but it gets very hectic. It's, it, it gets crazy. And then right after that pup punk concert. So it's going to be chaos. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. View house ballpark, view house ballpark. It's one of the cooler venues ever. I've actually been there just from going to Colorado and going to a Rockies game. So do you think, um, do you think Denver is one of the more universally praised cities in America? Everybody, anytime you bring up Denver to somebody, everybody goes, oh, I love Denver. Denver's great. Oh, I got fa- I got a friend that moved to Denver. They love it there. We went, we went on a little bachelor party. We went to a Rockies game there. People just love Denver. It's I love so Denver. clean. Yeah. It's so, um, it's this little city that you can see from all different angles of around Denver. Like you can be. 30 miles away and you see this city in the you just describe it it as a little city that people can see from all angles around Denver. well it's true because it's like flat on denver like like so i'm not used to that where you can see out right like i've been to families houses do you think your city is two-dimensional the one that you live in well no you're missing what i'm saying right like i can't see so i'm only 22 miles away from new york city right now and i can't see new york city because it's so 
Like there's so many. You. As you approach it, you can see it from. Yeah, like like I've like I've been to family's house in Colorado where like you walk out and you can just like see the city out there. You know what I mean? Because they live in like a very flat area of Colorado where there's like nothing between them and the city. Like they, like you can just see it out there, even though it's a small city. You can see it from a lot of like far away. I I'm not used to that. Like and that's a lot of cities. I feel like in the Midwest, like you could see it as you're approaching it from further away because there's not much blocking it. You know what I mean? There's more yeah, land. It's so flat. I think you're right. I think it's so flat, right? Like the, um, that's just kind of, um, no, that's a fact I would say of St. Louis too. Like as you get pretty close to driving into St. Louis, even though it's not a very big city, I think you're right. You can see it from far away because everything's so flat. Chicago's that way too. Yeah. The, the Midwest. And then the mountains like just make it look so small. You're like, oh, there's only that amount of buildings. But when you're in the city of Denver, it seems like a regular city. But like when you're driving up to it, you can fit it all in just like your hand as you're driving up. You're like, oh, that's the whole thing. That's what we're about to go into. And all the stadiums are right there. It's fucking awesome. It's so cool. They, I think they have a little bit of a homeless problem now. But I think it's getting worse. I just think it's a lot of the big cities. I think it's just a lot of the big cities in general. Definitely. But I think it's definitely like like you used to be able to like eat off the floors and hopefully it's still like that post pandemic. But um, I haven't been there since uh, everything's all the, the shit's gone down. So I'm hoping it's still the same city that I, I, I fall. I've fallen in love with. Denver's great. Um, you're going to be playing. You're going to be the drummer boy. Is your elbow ready for that? I know we don't want to no. do the whole thing about your elbow all the time, but just as no. a friend. Uh, put some, I got put, through. Put, shoot some. Uh, what do you shoot in? What do athletes shoot Cortisone in? Cortisone shot. Cortisone. Boom. Pump it heroin? full and get out what there. Are they, like, what are the fucking Well, no, that's musicians. There? That's not athletes. Musicians do the heroin. It's No, you got to put some, some cortisone in there and, and get out there, pal. I don't think cortisone helps with nerves. I don't think anything helps with nerves. Like the nerve damage, you know what I mean. So might as well I mean, try it. What's the worst that could happen? You know? Yeah, I'll be I'll be taking some stuff. I'll, I'll I won't be up there, you know, with no help. I'm definitely gonna be doing something up there. Um, You'll be on PEDs the on the stage. Gotta gotta. So I did. We did our last show prep, our last practice. I got through it. To be honest, I wasn't as theatrical as I wanted to be. I'm not hitting the drums as hard as I wanted to hit them. Um, you know, certain shit doesn't slap as it used to, but I'm getting through it. I definitely feel like an old man playing the drums. I'm like just getting through it, barely hitting the cymbals and barely. But you're going to be theatrical Frankie in the moment, right? Like when you guys are just practicing together, you're not caught up. You're not lost in the sauce. When you guys are, in I don't know if I you physically got thousands get... of screaming fans. Oh, you're going to adrenaline, baby. Adrenaline oh, yeah. is gonna that's hit like that. It's like moms are lifting up fucking cars when their right. kids are stuck. I mean, that's gonna be you doing your theatrical drum performance. That crowd's gonna so. hit. That adrenaline's gonna start coursing through your veins, and you're just gonna turn into insert name of famous drummer here. That's so what you're I, gonna be. I think Denver. I'll play a little bit less crazy. I think Kilroy's in Indiana the next day. I'm gonna get lost in the sauce. Because there's some there's there are two different venues. Like Kilroy's is gonna be at the University of Indiana in Bloomington. Chaos when you talk about who's gonna be there. Like all these drunk college kids. Denver, I think I don't know if I'm like stereotype stereotyping Denver, but I think they're just gonna be all laid back, sitting in a lawn chair. They're not gonna know what the fuck we're doing up there. It's gonna be a weird concert. Like, you know what I mean? Like if the Broncos lose, it's gonna be a weird vibe. So like I'm definitely going to get lost in the sauce at Kilroy's. Hopefully, I do get lost in the sauce in Denver, but I'm not anticipating it. You're about to go on tour, basically. Yeah, and some cities are better than others. Like, when it comes to, like, crowds, like, I'm sure bands are like, you know, this it didn't have the pop. You know, Trent knows all about the pop. Certain cities have more pop. Every city that I've been to, there's been a pop, so I think every city has a pop. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm in Kansas. So Prairie Dunes... Um, Perry Maxwell design course. Perry Maxwell, um, silver or uh, Southern Hills. He's got his hands all all over all kinds of fantastic golf course. I believe um, three holes at Pine Valley. Perry Maxwell um, was involved in the tenth hole at Augusta National. Um, Perry Maxwell was famous for moving the green like fifty yards back. Now the tenth hole has historically believe I've been the hardest. I believe the hardest hole in Masters history. So he's got his kind of fingerprints all over the place. Here in the middle of nowhere, I'm talking the middle of nowhere, Kansas, Prairie Dunes has been listed as both Bill Core and Ben Crenshaw list this place as their top 10, one of their top 10 courses in the United States of America here in Kansas. So 
um, when we did the Jay Owen match last year, if folks recall, um, when the f- four country stars against us, Darius Rucker, it was awesome. We won that match. That was, you know, right when the four-man scramble was getting real hot. Um, a big part of why we did that and why Jake Owen agreed to do that was we were like, yeah, we're going to raise a bunch of money for the Jake Owen Foundation. People couldn't do events last year during COVID 2020. Um, so we're looking up, you know, coming up with reasons to basically or, or, or ways to raise money for the Jake Owen Foundation. Long story short, I put uh, a round with Riggs in there as one of the options. I was trying to generate a little bit of buzz, a little bit more money for the fundraising. Well, um, these guys, Kevin and Brandon, who are members out here who live about 45 minutes, I believe, in Salina, Kansas, 45 minutes away from here. Um, they were the ones that bid. They were the ones that auction, won the auction to have that round. So this was cashing in. And luckily, their members at Prairie Dunes got to come out here and play the course. It was like band and ask wins yesterday. It was like 30, 35 mile an hour wins the entire time. So it played extremely difficult. Um, but it is awesome. It is very much the only course it ever really reminded me of visually um, was Aaron Hills and that you got like that tall prairie grass all over the place, you know, fescue grass, prairie grass. Um, but then this really cool, you know, topography hills that kind of wind through um, mostly a flat terrain, um, except kind of not except, but like there's these, these dunes and these cool hills and such that are, you know, in the middle of fucking nowhere, Kansas. Um, so, we played yesterday 36 holes. I haven't played 36 holes in a long time. Uh, Matt Janella, who was on Golf Channel forever, who's a good friend of mine, um, is out here as well. He knows these guys. So he kind of was like, yeah, if Riggs is going to do you know, his round then, why don't I come out? So uh, Matt Janella and his producer, Colt, are out here, and they're fucking awesome. So we played 36 holes yesterday at Prairie Dunes. We did the chipping well into the night after having dinner, and we basically were just in one yesterday on a Tuesday um, at Prairie Dunes out here. But for a course that's rated very, very highly, that is one that I would <clears throat> pretty much have assumed for my entire life I would never get to. Uh, like we've talked about many times, why the fuck would I be in Hutchinson, Kansas? And if I was, how would I possibly have access to play a golf course like this? Um, but it is really, really cool. It's old school, treacherous greens. They were running at, you know, probably what felt like maybe an 11 or a 12 yesterday, but with really fast winds or really high winds, they were running extremely fast. Um, but got to check one off the bucket list. Really awesome experience. Uh, you know, Midwestern, so it's pretty laid back. Uh, we got to rip around at carts for the second 36, which anytime or second 18, anytime you're at like a really kind of um, highly regarded course and you get to just rip around in golf carts. I feel like that's a, a huge bonus for guys like us. Um, so it was a very, very cool experience in a golf course. Again, that I got to check off the list that otherwise I would imagine I would never under any circumstances be able to or find myself in the in the right spot in life where I would be playing Prairie Dunes. So um, it was really, really, really cool. How did you play? Did you did you win your matches against these guys? Uh, no, I played okay. I would say we ran into a bit of a buzzsaw. This fucking guy, Kevin, that we played against, who's about to drive me to the airport. I got to go to Wichita, Kansas, to the airport in 30 minutes. That's where we're doing the I'm podcast. I'm going to for. Wichita. What song is that? Seven Nation My... Army by the White Stripes. Oh. Doom, 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 doom. That's the only part of that song that I know. I don't know. I didn't even know that song had lyrics. I didn't either. Mm -hmm. They Um, usually cut off after the domes. Finished our round yesterday. He had four straight birdies to finish the round. That's pretty good. So he left you guys dust in the wind. Are we in the Nick Faldo interview again? It feels like. (laughs) You're trying to you're trying to work in a Kansas song title. No. Now you're what, lying. The, can't have a conversation. Like he left you guys dust in the wind, made you guys carry on wayward son. I mean, it's just you, know, you had no chance to beat him. You ran to a buzz stop. Then he goes back to his phone. You see him like go back to his phone. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's top five on Spotify for Kansas? At that point, it was a point of no return for Riggs. So, <laughs> all right. Um, four birdies in a row is obviously a preposterous move. Um, but that's why I'm in Kansas. That's the experience that I had. It was really, really cool. Like I said, the club's awesome. It's fucking October. The, October, I got to tell you, across the entire country, I think everybody would probably agree with this, but October has to be the best weather month on average across the entire you, country. I saw you tweet that the other day. Um, I Ooh. thought about it for a long time, and I think it's probably correct. I 
it's between September and October, and the only reason I don't want to pick September is because, like, I have bad feelings about September from when I was younger. Just, like, going back to school was a horrible time in life. So, like, October, you were kind of back in the mix anyway, and it didn't really hurt as much. And it was, like, Halloween and the chill and the hoodies. Man, I think across the board, you will find the best weather in America in October, right? I agree. And I think, you know, we were thinking about there are places, right? Like I think in Maine and even maybe in New England in certain spots where it is nicer overall through September than it is October. It gets a little too chilly. But then in Florida or Arizona or certain places in the south, it's fucking hot as balls in September and it's kind of miserable. So I think if you took the whole average, and I thought about this a lot on my last couple flights that I took, a lot. I think that Across the country as a whole, state by state, county by county, I think October has to have the best weather in the entire country because it is beautiful almost every single place in October in the United States of America. What do we think about April? It's wet. April showers bring May flowers. It just rains a lot of places in April. It is wet. Hmm. I hadn't thought about the moisture angle, but... I feel like April's pretty good because you're 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 really coming out of winter fully. You haven't hit the hot months of of May, June, July, which are just a nightmare sometimes. April, I I'm with you. I think October. No, the best. April sucks, dude. I'm what? thinking about April. Uh, April doesn't suck, but like compared to October, man, like April's just a soft month. Like October hits hard. Like October is a month. October is a season. April's just a month. Is uh, October is a season? April's just another month in the 12. Like, I don't think about April at all. April's you know, just... Yes, you do. You're, you're, you're coming no, you out don't. of the winter time, and it's it's the masters. I'm not looking things forward are starting to, to April. Bloom. That is, that's the start of a new season. No, April's like May to me. It's like, what? Did we even go through April Don't May? put April with May. That's disrespectful. Like, it's just like you forget it's even a month. October has a name. October, man. Like, you know when October is. You feel October. Yeah. Look, I love April. April has a lot of positives. You had to talk about one month overall in terms of just the best month with sports and weather sure. and We're hype and all that. Fine. That, though. We're just talking weather, dude. April, like Frankie's saying, April can't even get in the Uber with, like, September and October. It no. is stuck with May, dude. And May and April are fucking – you guys are getting in the next ride. We're going to meet you at the restaurant, like, whatever. Eight, uh, October and September are far and away, I would say, better than April. Far here's my away. Here's my reasoning to the fullest here, okay? And I love April. This is a guy that loves April. The reason is, is because – yeah, April, obviously, the Masters, and you got sports and all that stuff. That's fine. October, it's probably hard to find as good as sports in October as well. You've got MLB fucking World Series. You've got NBA kicking off. You've got NHL kicking off. And you've got football. There's certain days where all four sports are on. And you've got PGA Tour still kicking. I mean, come on, boys. Like, October is fucking phenomenal. Secondly. Halloween, spooky. Halloween, fucking spooky Pumpkins season, all over the place. The foliage. And there's something about, and this is this is where I really want to get serious. There's something about coming from the hot to like the chilly that feels better than going from the cold to like the warm. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I, w- I was hoping you weren't going to make that point because it's the best one. It's like like you're hot, but you're still livable. I can go outside. I can wear a t-shirt. I don't wear shorts, but I can like. I can live out there in the summer. It's actually nice. Like I can be outside. And then all of a sudden God just like turns on the AC a little bit and you get this like little bit of a chill. That's a huge difference from coming from the winter badlands of January, February, March. You're like, I don't even want to go out there. Is it even livable? This place sucks. And then you're finally, everyone's opening their doors and looking around like, can we come out of here right now? Like, <laughs> is this okay? Like, yeah, man, that's a good feeling. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, April is a good feeling. It is. You're, st- you're still like, you've got these Bambi feet. You don't know if it's okay. You don't know if it's, if it's ready to frolic. I'm frolicking in October. I'm still off the high of the summer. I'm still wearing t-shirts and, and light clothing. 
No, I was largely playing devil's advocate because I do think September is oh, the best don't, time of don't year. Don't do that. Stand by your shit. No, I, I, I said at the beginning, I was just, I we'll like see. October the most, but I think April is in the running. I think, I think April could maybe get in the Uber with September and October. I think they should uh, maybe allow that. No way. I think they should allow oh, that. I think they'd have God. a good time in the same Uber. But because of the no masters, way. like, I, I don't know, like. No, but I, I do think there like someone could switch your logic entirely and say like going into uh the bunker of winter and being like, Oh my god, are we ever gonna be able to get out there again? And then the sun rises one morning and it's fifty five to sixty degrees when it's been eleven degrees for three months and now we oh life is blooming again and I feel alive. Like I think that's another way you could argue it. But again, October Coming from the summer months when it's so hot and I and I you know I'm not in the best of shape and I don't look great in in tight shirts and then when I can throw a hoodie on I feel like I'm more myself and it's it's a far more comfortable temperature month for me. Dude, than that any of the first rest. night when it's chilly outside after it just hasn't been chilly outside in five months and you get to throw on whatever you want a hoodie, a oh. pullover, a quarter zip. Everyone's talking about how there's a little bit of a chill in the air. It's brisk, right? People use the word brisk. You haven't heard the word brisk in fucking five months. There's nothing better than going from hot to a little bit chilly. And then it's just like that for a month and a half or so. And oh, like you say, you, you on these Monday, chilly Monday nights, you see people walking to the bar. They got their fucking jersey on because there's Monday night football. You got Thursday night football. You got you hear whispers that the Islanders and the Blues are geared up. Blues look fucking awesome, by the way. But you hear these teams are gearing up and getting ready to go. If you're an NBA fan, like Frankie said, they're getting ready to go. We had uh, uh, Lakers Warriors last night, so you got just you're getting hit with stuff all the time. Meanwhile, it's brisk outside. You can wear a winter hat. You can wear a hoodie. You can wear a crew neck. You can wear whatever you want after being hot for so long. Oh, October boys did- is is living. Did you guys watch the video that Feidelberg made for um, the sad boy season? He, he has the sad boy season line of hoodies and hats. And the, the stuff is actually great. If you, if you need like any of that stuff, sad boy season, it's a great logo. But he, he, in one part of the video, he said, this is a time of year to drink dark liquor and dark bars and listen to music made by mustachioed men. And that's like. Who drink whiskey. <laughs> who, that's as good as it gets. And he's right. Like this is the best time of year. I think you guys are right too where. I love going outside and everybody's a little more bundled up. You can wear a hoodie. You can wear a coat. You can wear a jacket. I just wanted to make the case for April because I know people on the internet are going to make the case for April, but it is October. Well, anyone that makes that case is wrong. So if you're about to tweet at us or if you've tweeted at us prior to us further making our points, like if you fired off a tweet three minutes ago and now you agree with us, I want you to now tweet again that you apologize for saying that April's better than... Because I have that happen to us all the time. Some guy will be like, you're an idiot. And then two minutes later, they'll be like, just listen to the rest of it. I actually agree with you guys. So I want that I want that exact apology about you saying April's better than October. Another one that we get... points. Another one that we get quite a bit is, um, man, I can't believe you guys didn't bring up this during the argument. And then they'll be like, ha ha, just listen to the next 30 seconds. Like You, you, you guys nailed it, you know? So um, credit <laughs> to us, the times that we do... Do that. And I don't want to turn this into an April bashing session. I love April. April's awesome. I've gone to war for April. I've probably said at times that April is the best. But if I'm um, positioned, which I am right now, where I have to defend one over the other, it is October, ladies and gentlemen. And it's not even close. It also just has a better name. October. Yeah, April's the name of, um, I don't know, the nice faint voiced girl that like uh answers the phone calls at your office you know what i mean like hey april happy monday i'm thinking of like the office like uh maybe a porn star porn stars maybe are named april i don't know is there a porn star named april i'm sure there is man i'm sure not that not one that comes off the top of the head i don't know i wouldn't think if i've tuned in and it's like october is doing x y and z i'd be like "Eh, it's a weird if there's not a porn star named april flowers then we've got a problem because yeah, that's I a great the- that's a great porn star <laughs> name, man. April Flowers, dude. Come on. Uh, October's you got some a better good name. Captions you could write with April Flowers, you know, for some of those videos. Absolutely. <laughs> October's a better name. I'm not denying that. And I'm Look, not the guy who's of- fighting on the side of April. I'm just saying that people are gonna say it. 
April showers. You make you kind of were you know fighting for April there. So I don't know. I don't know what that was all about. But, um, no, devil's advocate. We, look, we're talking a lot about the seasons and clothing. Um, Peter Millar. Okay, we mentioned crew necks. We mentioned pullovers, quarter zips, hoodies. Nobody in the world does it better than Peter Millar. This hot item I've been wearing right now. It's got like a little, almost like a little fleece feeling to it. But yeah. it's, I don't know what this is. I, this I can tell because is... I think I have one that's very similar from Peter Millar, and it's it's you're wearing a blanket. It's a it's a blanket that society has decided you can wear in public. This is also a um, pullover quarter zip that, if I were living in the real world, we had to go to a, a work meeting and look. Prof- I would wear like a um, a button down or a polo underneath this, and as much as it feels like you're wearing a blanket, this also when you roll in, you look classy. You mm-hmm. look like you know what you, you look sophisticated, yet you're as cozy as you could possibly be. On these two flights I'm about to take, because Wichita's in the middle of fucking nowhere. Uh, Ooh, on these two flights I'm about to take to get back to Scottsdale, I'm going to wear this cozy blanket right now from Peter Moir. This has to be. Maybe it's part of their crown sport um, line. I'm not even 100% sure what this is, but if you go to petermoir.com slash foreplay, you can look at uh, the whole roster, the whole lineup of the things that we love, that we wear, from hoodies to quarter zips to blanket light quarter zips to crew necks, pants, polos, if you want to get more into that. But it is layer season. It's the best month of the entire year. October just brings it. We talked about that a lot. Check out the entire range of uh, the Crown Sport outerwear and the full range of Peter Millar apparel vests. I've been seeing some vests out here um, the last few months, you know, September, October which are the best months of the year. No offense to Trent. Uh, PeterMoir.com slash foreplay. Go check out a lot of our favorites. Nobody does the layering season better. I mean, nobody um, than Peter Moir. So go check out a lot of their options. Uh, um, we got a, I didn't, um, I didn't, I didn't want to interrupt that ad read, but it was, it's for G4. It's not Peter Moir. Oh, we could do G4 too. You want me to talk about G4 right now? Yeah, that'd be awesome. I mean, uh, how about these shoes? How about the MG4 shoes where it's like you're walking on a cloud? What can't this company do right now? They really you know do what I mean, Jake Bass? Shoes. They G4. really... <clears throat> they make the I, wore my, I wore my G4 shoes um, when I lost my shoes at Bandon. I wore them to dinner. I wore them to the airport because they were so comfortable and I had no more shoes that um, no one even noticed I was wearing golf shoes. I wore them from the airport to the golf course, and they served me perfectly on, on both occasions, in both settings. It, it, it wasn't enough spikes for me to ever make any um, noise at the airport. You weren't click-clacking through the it airport? wasn't click-clacking, but then also it gave like me just... Bryson. Exactly. It gave me just enough grip on the Your golf favorite course. favorite player on PGA Tour? Got a lot of people that agree with me with the Bryson stuff. You know? Yeah, a lot of people were emotional. People were emotional. They said that, um, you know, if someone like Tiger Woods said that or something, it would have been super normal, you know? But you could argue that about anything that Bryson has said in the past. That argument's never made it. sense to me when you just turn it into a different person. It's like, yeah, it's a different person who doesn't have like the history. If you just eliminate that... all context, then it's different. It's like, oh, Right, really? like the, our main point about the Bryson stuff was that he has been saying these things forever, and there has always been this way, and he always over-analyzes and over-explains things that don't necessarily need to be over-analyzed and over-explained. So then Good these point, people Trent. who are saying, if Tiger Woods said this, you guys would be more interested in it. Yeah, because Tiger doesn't fucking talk. Tiger doesn't say these things. So if he says something like that, I'm going to listen, and I'm going to listen intently. You can't change the person who says it and then be like, look, your point is wrong. So I think Riggs has actually made the point that, that Tiger Woods does talk like that and that we've always just glossed over it. I think that was one of his main points when I was against Bryce DeChambeau. He used to say, like, Tiger Woods says the same things. He talks about things in deeper ways than Bryson does. He's a complete golf nerd. He I'm says just them saying to I, Bryson. He doesn't to me, say like, them to us. I think you could probably find Tiger Woods talking extremely deeply about, like, the, the game of golf, like, taking things out of ways that, like, no one's ever even thought of it. And they're like, who the fuck is this guy? But we just accept it because he's Tiger. I'm just saying I've changed as a person. I accept what Bryson says. And I think that the ball thing was super interesting. I also got a tweet that if you drop a ball, 
and it like you can see how it like goes sideways like if you just have a ball on like concrete or like tile and you drop it like sometimes it won't just like come right back up to you like if you drop it a hundred times it'll bounce like different ways sometimes and like the harder you drop it it'll come right back at you you know what i mean and if you drop it from like a really low point and it's slower it may hit that edge you can really see where it hits the edge of the dimple it's pretty interesting if you throw it hard it comes right back G4.com slash four. You get 10% off your first order. The Galavanters are uh, maybe the best all-around shoe in the entire world. They're classy. They're old school looking, yet they have the modern technology and a little bit of the modern kind of sporty look um, while holding that old school feel. So those are amazing. The MG4 series, the MG4 X2s, which are their newest. Um, They've got the molded heel cup, which prevents heel slip, provides superior comfort. Uh, They're lightweight. They're uh, waterproof. And they're awesome. So go to g4.com slash four. Um, you get your first order 10% off when you go to g4.com slash four. I'm not saying any of those things are untrue. I'm just saying that uh, you wouldn't have thought the way that you feel about them two months ago. And he hasn't changed the way that he's speaking at all. I think you're just more accepting of it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. That's and I think saying. that's fine. I think that's totally fine. I think you've just, you've, you've switched over a little bit. And I, I think that actually shows growth. Riggs and I are just like, no. We're not going to do this. You are like, I'm still like somewhat on the stance that it was like a little bit more normal and interesting. Something I'd find in like a, I don't know. I just, <clears throat> it was such an interesting thing that if I was reading it while I was taking a shit in a golf magazine, I would have also brought it up on the podcast. It didn't have to come from Bryson is my, I will die saying that point. Like it's just, I genuinely thought if Harris English said it and I saw it in a tweet, I would have thought it was interesting. But when Bryson brought up the flag stick stuff, we talked about it. It just, we were but excited. like, you also, like, and if I don't anybody know how brought to up like the flag stick why. stuff, we would have talked about it. We would have been interested in it. We no, just thought the, at the time that the way that he spoke about it made him come off like an unnecessary asshole. And I think that was identical with the dinner. He used like launching velocity when he talked about the dimples. He can't I'm just sorry say that. I, I'm sorry. I can't like quantify or like, I, there's no like. There's no thing for me to explain why I took that as a douchebag and this is not. But I'm. It's called the Ryder Cup. That's the answer. I'm letting you know that like this seemed less douchey. Maybe because he was talking to the Nelk boys about it. Like he wasn't fucking explaining it in front of a whiteboard. Like he used to do the commercials for Bridgestone. Like I don't know. I just think he's changed his personality. He's changed his persona. He's kind of just done his own thing now for so long (laughs) that you have to. You have to just accept that, that that's who he is. I don't think he's you, doing things. I don't think he's doing things for it to be his brand anymore. I just think he is who he is now. What, go back and you. listen to my original. Go back and listen to my original hate for Bryson DeChambeau. It's that he never was able to find out who he was. Every week he was somebody else. Let me ask you which one you think is more likely: that a 31 year old guy who has stayed the same, talked the same, done the same things his entire life just over the course of these past two months has completely changed his personality and the way that he does things. Or the guy who is listening to this guy talk, watched him play at a golf event. That was awesome. Or do we think he has changed his opinion as opposed to the other guy changing his entire personality? Well, I also would say that like has media or have, like, so I only am able to take him in and what I see of him, right? So for years, we've only seen negative responses to what he says. And now, maybe because of his Ryder Cup performance and how he's now changed tune and completely won over American golf fans, maybe they are now, like, we're seeing just better stuff of him, which is not my fault. Like, I'm just reading Bryson DeChambeau stuff. But the People ones are that liking were putting him that negative stuff on the previous stuff was us. We were ones putting. Yeah, but it was everyone. Yeah, but it was everyone. Like, er, like every every blog you read about Bryson DeChambeau was like the scientist is at it again, and like he was always nitpicking every single thing he did, which I fed into. I loved it. I loved hating on Bryson DeChambeau. I'm just saying now it feels like every time I see a Bryson thing, it's almost like positive, uplifting things about his career. He's at the fucking long drive contest. He's on funny podcasts with guys that like that like our generation likes to actually listen to instead of his YouTube page where no one watches it. Like he's actually doing things to me that are more likable than he was two years ago. Is that because like the, th- the media is now allowing him to do that? Like we're finally just seeing Bryson not talk himself into the worst situations that he's always talked himself into. He couldn't get out of his way. Like four months ago, every single time he talked, there was another fucking blog. There was another article on golf.com. Like he was always saying the wrong things. The Brooks thing was just beating him down. Everything was Brooks, Brooks, Brooks. Now it's just like, this is who Bryson is. 
and I actually like that better than all the bullshit that we've ever taught that we've ever talked about Bryson. He finally just found out who he is. He's just Bryson now. Bryson is acceptable. I'm accepting who Bryson is. I used to think that he was trying to find who Bryson was. Every week it was another thing. He was it was just trying to make his brand, and I didn't like the come up, but I actually like the result. Does that make any sense? No, you don't like that. No, because it's just because the Ryder Cup. That's the no, only reason. Like everything that you just described is not true. The only thing that changed yes, it all is, that dude. time is that he just played in the Ryder Cup and it drove the green on one, and but, you love that. So no, it's not. Like we're living in a different Bryson world than we were fucking three months ago. Like because of the Ryder course. Cup. That's no, it's it. not. He does the yeah, exact but, same stuff. His whole life was about this Brooks and Bryson argument, and like every show, that's the only thing we talked about, and like that's why we hated him so much. Like. I understand that probably his play and like the actual event of the Ryder Cup helped him and Brooks stop, but the fact that we're living in a world where we don't have to see that stuff about Bryson makes me like him more. How does that not make any sense? Here's what I'll agree with you on, is that the lens that the media is currently viewing Bryson DeChambeau through is different. It is positive. It is more pro-Bryson, and that is because of the Ryder Cup, and I think that that... Which is fine, but like... That yeah. is fine. I think that's fine, but what I do think is that he will slowly chip away at that. He will slowly chip away at that good faith with the stuff that he does. I, he just he'll keep doing it. He'll do the dimple stuff. Like right now the dimple stuff thinks the the dimple stuff thing seems fine to you because we are in that honeymoon viewing it through a positive Bryson lens. But he's gonna then he's gonna two weeks from now he's gonna say something again and it's gonna chip a little bit away and then two weeks later say something again to the point where people are gonna be like all right I'm I'm now I'm, I don't want to do this anymore I I know it's it's over. I'm done viewing it through that lens. I don't. I think agree. So. I think the lens now has just been completely set in stone that this is who Bryson is. I think because I don't think you even believe that. I don't. Think I do. You I believe that. I think because no, we live in a world in which no we're, way that you I, that. listen. This guy's allowed to change people's perception of him, and I think that if we accept, certainly if we accept the dimple talk from Bryson now, I think like our brains are just going to be geared to just that is who Bryson is. Like, you're allowed to be the same person that you were three years ago, but people now perceive you differently because of things that have happened. It doesn't mean that, like, he's not going to do what he always did, but, like, we're all going to perceive it differently because we like Bryson now. Like, the the majority of people have changed their tune on Bryson. So, like, I, I, think, I just think – but it also just – I don't know. I, I don't know why that's not allowed. I, I It is allowed. It is allowed. I just think it's going to wear on people. I do. I do think he's going to – like – I, again, I'm, now I'm just repeating myself, but the dimple stuff, people are like, look, this is interesting. And I just think that, that it'll, it'll get old. It'll get old. And I want to say, uh, finally, my final point will be that I like that we have like a Bryson guy on the show now because otherwise we just dump on it. Yeah, and I hope that you're right. I actually hope for every everyone's sake that you're right. That would bring more positivity to the game of golf. It would make Bryson's life better. People would be more positive and happy about him. I just think my guess is, my best, if, if, if you put a gun to my gun to my, and you said, is it going to go this way or that way? The way that I think it's going to go is that there will be a clip that comes out where Frankie Borelli is like, all right, I know I said X, Y, and Z, but this fucking guy, and then, and then eventually we're back. That is what I think the outcome of all of this will be. Okay. That's it. Fair enough. That's what and, I said. But I hope that you're right. I hope that you're right. And this uh, on this podcast, and we know we can't predict the future, so we're just going to keep... Going which is forward, insane, which is insane because every time we try to do this with the Ryder Cup, that was Riggs' his whole point. You can't predict the future, and we're literally assuming that Bryson's just going to change his whole outlook on life in the next three weeks. No, we're, we're saying he hasn't changed his outlook on life. We're saying he's just the right. same person. I mean, Trent just said two seconds ago he's going to chip away. He's going to say things like you can't. No, because predict I think any that's that. who he is. You can't predict it though. No, you can't. But that's I'm just my going assumption. based off. I'm going ba right, which I actually agree with. But we weren't allowed to do that a month ago. Well, those were Ryder Cup. Were, that was wartime. Those, those podcasts. Is, I don't know what we do. This with is those. a peacetime. This is a peacetime. This time is a, right. This is peacetime. Right. We can predict things. It doesn't if we feel want. like peacetime. It does not feel like peacetime. <laughs> do you, I'm do being you see, pinned against Frankie, the wall, Frankie? All right. Do you see what we're saying though at all? Like I understand that we're all in, in our corners here and we're like rah, but like there's I see like I see what you're saying, but I just don't think it's gonna last. I see what you're saying. You're just not giving any. You're not giving any. Um, you're 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 squeezing me as tight as possible on the thing that 
you're not understanding that no matter who said that dimple thing, I would have brought it up on the podcast and thought it was I believe cool. you. It has nothing to do with, like, I've changed my tune on Bryson because he hit a drive on hole one. I genuinely would have read that golf.com article and never, ever, ever compared it to the coefficient of restitution of the flag stick. There's just, like, there's a difference to me about it. And I, can't I get that believe you. you guys. I believe you. I believe you. It's not your I fault. Do you. I do, too. Fault. I, it just, it's just, but it, it's, it's evidence of something else going on. That's all. I wish fucking Harris English said it. And like, we never would have made the comparison that I like this and I didn't like the coefficient of restitution of the flag stick. It's not, it's just not fair to me. But I believe you. I just but, think if Bryson would have said it two months ago, you would have had a different take. That's what I think. But you, you're right. Like you, the evidence is there that you had a lot of people and I got a lot of the tweets too of people being like, I'm with Frankie on this one. So the the perception or the idea of Bryson or how people feel about him has very clearly changed. I it's just like it, it it made me think like bro, remember those Bridgestone balls with the dimple inside the dimple, and we we're like, what the fuck is this about? Like we yeah. literally looked at these balls and we're like, what? Is, why is there a dimple inside a dimple? Like, did that have anything to do with what Bryson's saying? Where like they're trying to change the angles of when you're hitting them? Like I don't know anything about golf technology. Like it made me think about it. Now people are dropping balls and seeing them go sideways, but if you if you slam it against the concrete, it comes right back into your hand. Just shows if you hit it harder, it goes straighter. I don't know, man. That's like shit that we like like to know about. For sure, I agree. All right. Uh, All right. I got, how about we're about to interview a, a skateboarder? When? Sheckler. Isn't that, Is that today? today? <laughs> yes, yeah, later today. What time? Five. Wow. Yeah, we're doing that today. <laughs> but what are we gonna ask the skateboarder? How did you skateboard are, all those times? Who's on? Who's on the show? Is it us three? I I will not us. be I able to Trent's make that interview. Be, uh, he he can't make it. Oof. You guys, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Ryan Sheckler, you guys. He, he's. I know who Ryan Sheckler is. Yeah, oh, yeah. I know. I didn't know he was a big golfer. I'm gonna have to do some research. I big, got a couple flights coming up. I got to research it too. What'd you say, Jake? He's a big time golfer. He like got super injured throughout his career and picked up golf. A lot of skateboarders are big golfers. A couple are actually. You guys ever go through a? You guys ever go through a skateboarding phase? Yeah, I went through a skate park <sighs> phase. Really? Yeah. I was. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I was. I was big in the BMX bikes. Dave Miro was my hero. R.I.P. Damn. Um, yeah, we'd go to. A, they built a, a, a skate park in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. They painted it all blue. It was a big like fundraising effort, and I would go down there with my buddies, and we'd. I mean, I was never very good, but I liked the idea of it. You'd rip Dude, up. The I was rails. terrible. What, were some, what was some of the? What were some of the lingo? Like vert what? ramps, spine and ramps. Ollie, if you could ollie, but like you were what's legit. the uh, flip? My boys could do kick flips. Like, I couldn't do anything. What's the equivalent to like shredding gnar or like pow pow? Like what's the what's the skateboarding equivalent? You know, grind to? the rails, bruh. Is it know, grind rails? Know. Jake, Jake, know. Jake, what's the equivalent to shredding the gnar? I don't really think people say shredding the gnar. It's like, I mean, yeah, they do. You can you yeah, can say do. like like the <laughs> if you like point. you landed that he trick with steez. Like steez is a big thing. Like you landed that like trick clean. Um, clean. Okay. Like clean is a big thing. Like you stomped on the bolts, stuff like that. Like that, see, that's what, on the bolts. That's, oh, what, that's what I was looking for. That's what you need. What, we need. that's what we need. I was looking for. Like, hey, you want to stop? We're about to bolts? stop the bolts with this fucking yeah, guy. Yeah, no problem. No uh, problem. That's a good one. We need something like that for golf. Like you know, um, we need something like that for golf. Hit the links. God, it's nah. not as good at all. You need something. Hit need the some- links is a big one, but it sucks. You need something <laughs> like stomp the bolts. Like um, something about hitting. You know, like uh, it's got to be. We something just say about, like you're gonna go tee it up. Like that's brutal. No, we, it's got to be something that is skateboard esque. You know, shred the gnar, stomp the bolts, and you know when you're someone go says like the dimple, bro, you're gonna go compress <laughs> the dimple. That's, the dimple. <laughs> that's, that's a little too bad. scientific. Oh, yeah. Um, fuck, man. Yeah, it's like it's got to be something like smack the pebbles, dude. Ask, or something like ask that. You know what I mean? Ask totally, totally. He's no, no. Ca- gonna, I'm gonna write it down right now. I'm gonna Do write it. it down right now. We gotta ask him that fucking question. Here you go. Like, some real the, time, some real time shit. prep here. Be like, we wanna, we wanna talk about golf in a cooler way. Skateboarders are just cool dudes. They say things like, 
what is it? Stomp, Stomp the bolts. Stomp bolts. the bolts. How do we talk about golf in a cool? Like, what does Ryan Sheckler say? That Dude, makes what is he gonna cool? say when we say that Stomp like, the bolts is cool? Is he gonna be like, you guys? Like, what are you fucking talking about, Jake Bass? Did Jake Bass set us up here? You think? No. So like, you could be like, like when you're going, like you're gonna go like skate a spot, like like you want to go skate the spot, like stuff like that. I guess that'd be okay. kind of like hitting the links. Um, stomp the bolts. There's nothing better than stomp the bolts. We're <laughs> yeah. not getting a better one than I that. Mean, <laughs> yeah, that's like that's like in reference to like, like let's say like you pipe a drive and you're like you fucking hit that like on the face or whatever. I don't know on the screws yeah, on the screws. Screw, yeah, it's a screws. kind of a, the exact same thing. Like you kick flip down like a twelve stair. Like you stomp that. Stomp the bolts. Stomp the bolts is incredible. Really good. Really. Dude, my uh, there was a phase where my older brother and his boys got really into skateboarding. You know. And I was the younger brother. I didn't know what was going on. I came in. God, I must have been. Who knows? I was probably eight or nine years old, maybe. And I came in, and they had this. They, you know, everybody loved to get the uh, uh, the boards with the designs on them. They're mm-hmm. so sick. And they're flipping through. And I rolled over, and I remember just being like, "Oh, is this like a band aid book?" And I legit <laughs> thought it was a bunch of sweet band aids. And for the next what? life. Cause it just looked like a bunch of band-aids on this book. <laughs> All the designs of the skateboard. Oh man. And for the next like two or three years that they went through their cool skateboarding phase, I was like the dweeb that thought they were fucking band-aids in the book. That's Damn. tough. Just t- I, I had couldn't huge... get over it. I could never be like a stop the bolts guy after that. Cause no, I, you're a band-aid book were... guy. Totally. I had a dude. I had a huge X game phase. Did everyone not have a huge X games phase where oh, yeah. like throughout it, when you go to school, you get out for summer and then the X Games would be on, and I would just watch all of those guys. So constantly. Midwest. So Midwest. Dude, it's I, so Midwest. <laughs> really? Like we were not. Oh, my God, dude. Like, I, I just don't think. Yeah, I know it's, for a fact that me and my friends were not watching the X it's Games. Not like, a stretch a, to, it's not a stretch to say that those guys were my early on heroes, for sure. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, dude, fucking Dan Soder tells a story about it. Where he's like, I never knew anyone that I grew up with because he grew up in Colorado. He's like, I never knew anyone I grew up with had an accent until I watched the X Games. Like, I want to shout out all my sponsors. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that is that is how they talk. Fucking <laughs> so good, dude. I, so I, good. I yeah. I I mean, the X Games were were a huge deal. Love the X Games. Um, Still right. do when they're on. I'll, I'll pop. I'll put them on and watch them. Uh, we got a big interview, so we're going to be able to talk a lot of this stuff. First, got to talk about Roman. Roman swipes mm. are a clinically proven way to last longer in bed. Uh, they're effective. They're easy to use. They're fast acting. They don't require a prescription. Uh, we, get, we know how Roman works, right? Roman's just been delivering time after time again. If you're in a sexual situation, you don't want that to end. You don't want to be uh, finishing too soon. You would like it to last longer is essentially the reason. You try all this crazy stuff uh, from what you're going to think about to how you're going to curl your toes, to all kinds of crazy things. You know, you do any of that. You go to GetRoman.com um, slash four. Is that what our thing is? Hold on, I forgot. I actually clicked out of the ad read, so I have to pull Roman back up so I give you people the proper. Oh, yeah, GetRoman.com slash four. You get your first month of swipes for just $5. Uh, swipe them on, let them dry. You're good to go, and you can just last a really long time in bed. It's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, boys Stay. It is a no-brainer. Stay in the moment. That's the point we make during these reads all the time where, yeah, the, the old trick is to think about, you know, a glacier or whatever, whatever, you know, your grandma. Well, don't do that. That's actually weird. But like, come on, Frankie. You know Ew. what I mean? That's not what I meant. I didn't mean it like that. But what I'm saying is if you use Roman, oh, you don't have to think about grandma. anything. No, no, no. Don't think about your grandma. Jesus. Definitely don't do that. That would be weird as shit. Jesus but Christ. So you just think about what's going on. And you get to last longer. It's it's really as simple as that. That's the best way to do it with Roman. Uh, get Roman.com slash four. You get your first month of swipes for just $5. Uh, all right. I have to go catch a flight. And we are about to have uh, one of the more prolific skateboarders, you know, in the in the history of the world. We're going to ask them how we can make golf sound a little bit cooler. That's our plan. That's what we've come up with so far. You like that plan? Trent, you excited to hear what we come up with? Yes, I am. I'm excited to hear about what is the Stomp the Bolts equivalent in golf. Is Me Lurch going to be present for this podcast? Because I think he's the opposite of a skateboarder. He's like totally the least cool guy on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like uh, 
<laughs> Jersey Shore Beach Club and tennis. He's wearing like uh, Wimbledon whites out there. Hundred percent. That is. There's never been a skateboard in his hometown ever. Not once. <laughs> right. There's a law. There's a ban on skateboards in his town. <laughs> yeah. And he he's the type of guy who, if he saw skateboarders in a spot that they weren't supposed to be, he'd call the police. He wears quarter zips with no undershirts on him. <laughs> right. You know, he just kind of just walks around with his fucking quarter zip, like. And with like corduroy like, pants on, and, and he's like, got wet hair from the ocean, and he looks at these hooligans <laughs> stomping yeah. the bolts. That's by the I, park, th- and he's just like, he's like, gotta get, gotta get this riffraff out of here. <laughs> <laughs> those rascals, you gotta get those rascals out of here. Yeah, I hope he's present because you you can't find two more opposite people. No, and he'll claim uh, he loves X Games and he loves Sheckler, but we all know who he really is. Because you watch like a documentary or something. And yeah. Like, all right. Uh, all right. Next up, um, Ryan Shekler. We'll see how this goes. All right, folks. We're joined by a very special guest. Um, Ryan Shekler is one of the greatest skateboarders, skaters uh, of all time. Made it into a hell of a career, a hell of a brand. I was thinking about it um, a few minutes ago. Definitely the first skateboarder we've ever had on the show, right? Far and away. Far and away. I don't even know if anyone even crosses over. Like the Venn diagram of our guests. No. No I'm one honored. even comes close. No I'm one comes honored. close. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. I'm stoked, man. Dude, we get, uh, you know, we get like these fucking country club guys on our show all the time. You know, we talk golf and golf's great. Golf crosses a lot of stuff. But we got, you know, we were, I was even thinking like I got to try to like look a little cooler than I am when we do this interview. Well, <laughs> that was going to be my first question. Like, is, do you feel extreme extreme pressure to always make everything you say sound the coolest way possible right like like even when we asked you where you were like the way you just said like san juan california like we didn't even know what you said we kind of just nodded like you're just so it's so cool and just so like you're always thinking of like the cool way to th- say things does that just come natural to you Is, I, we're not cali at all so we don't know that like yeah you added that, that capistrano at the end the san juan <laughs> yeah, capistrano yeah. and i was like dude what is that is that, that a fucking wine is that where i am i'm in san juan puerto rico i was like it's got is that the same place i went right to google i had no idea what to do i mean you know it, it's it's a trip because it's like no it's not a conscious thing at all i just like <laughs> when I, when i get on you know things like this like obviously we've never met but like i can feel the vibe immediately so like it makes me comfortable where i'm like uh, it's all good. Whatever, whatever we say on here is like, it's going to be fun and we're going to have some good banter for sure. But um, it, it's a trip, you know, and, and that is a good question, dude. Cause I've, I used to have to worry about that. I used to have to worry about being on point and being like super precise with everything that I said. And um, I think that comes from like literally being in this kind of public eye since I was like eight years old, you know, and like, that's how I grew up. You know, a lot of kids like they get to grow up, go to school and like, and I'm not complaining, man. My life has been absolutely epic. A lot of ups, lots of downs. But um, from a very young age, I was always in front of a camera, front of video cameras, photographs, you know, this, this sort of thing. And um, a lot of my life has been documented. And I think, dude, a really big thing was like MTV. We used to have to do like, I used to have to do these voiceovers for every episode. And we did, you know, three seasons and I'd have to do two hours of voiceovers. And like, if I messed one up it, like we had to do it five times. So I just really started like trying to do things right the first time and like get it dialed so that I could actually go live and do my own day. And, um, you know, I think that just translates into how I get interviewed and just kind of the way I I speak now, a lot of people think I have an accent just from like how much I've traveled the world. Um, (laughs) I don't hear it, but like a lot of people do hear it. They think I'm from the East Coast or I don't, I don't even know Australia. Sometimes I get that one too, where I'm like, I, I don't hear it, but um, I don't know, man, through my travels, I've learned how to adapt. You know, I think um, I never finished high school, um, which was something that, you know, while I was skating and when I turned pro at 13, like I was, I felt like I was getting more beneficial learning from traveling to Europe, from traveling to, you know, all over the globe and actually having to figure out how to fit in socially um, in these different countries and, and get by and not stick out like a sore thumb. So like, yeah, I didn't finish my actual schooling, but I got schooling from the world. And um, I think that was more important personally for me. And um, it's definitely benefited me up to, 
to this point for sure. Man, we talk a lot about Tiger Woods on this show. You know, we debate obviously Tiger's uh, entire life. And a lot of times we talk about the fact that like, man, that did that guy ever even stand a chance to be or grow up or live like a normal life? And now you mentioned in from when you're eight years old, you know, being in the spotlight, were you even consciously at a young age or was there ever an age where you were like, okay, I'm not having a normal life or normal upbringing or normal childhood for good or bad just was there ever moments where you're like all right this whole all this shit is different um yeah that that's a great question too yeah man i think i and i was actually doing some reflecting on this recently um i think around 14 14 years old i i wanted to go to high school so bad like and the only reason i wanted to actually go to school was because of how much i had been traveling from eight years old until 13 and then turned pro at 13. But the way that skateboarding worked back then was like, you know, these kids get turned pro all the time now. It's like, it, it just happens. Um, social media and everything is, is really accessible and like they can get out these new pros left and right. Um, back then, like there was no social media, there was no nothing. Like you actually had to win gnarly skateboarding contests and have really gnarly companies backing you to earn your spot as a pro. So it wasn't something that we ever even talked about or like thought it was coming. You know, one day I just had a, they surprised me with a skateboard with my name on it and, and a graphic. And I was like, oh man. And they're like, yeah, we're, we're turning you pro. <laughs> and by doing what that. What a line that is. That's just crazy in itself. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're turning you pro today. It's like, just I'm we, just we're kid. turning right. you a pro right. now. That's exactly, and that's how it pro. felt. That's how it felt. You know, it was, it was uh, this company, World Industries, that, you know, Rodney Mullen and, and some of the most legendary skateboarders have ever rode for. Um, they saw something in me. They saw my determination. They saw how I competed. And uh, they wanted me to be pro for this company. And and it changed my whole life. You know, that first year of being pro, there were four main contests and uh, I was just a kid, you know, I wasn't worried about trying to be something in skateboarding. I just knew that I loved skateboarding and the fact that I was getting invited as a 13 year old to go skate with, you know, the, the 20 to 25 year old pros that I had looked up to my whole life. Um, that was enough for me. But the icing on the cake was that like, I love competing. I love that energy that like uh, that, that moment where you have to be present and, and put it down, you know, the final run, the last minute, you know, you only got one shot left and like, that's where I thrive. And I ended up winning all four of those contests that year. And um, it turned into this crazy whirlwind and all I wanted to do was be normal. So like going back to, to the Tiger Woods thing, it's like, and I, I don't compare myself to Tiger at all, but I can understand that like he was groomed from a very young age for success. Um, I was just skating for fun and enjoying it. It was something I was good at. And they said, you're turning pro. And I was like, oh, well, I guess we'll see how this goes, you know? And I'm getting ready to turn 32 at the uh, end of this year. And I'm still a professional skateboarder, active professional skateboarder. And um, super stoked, dude. Skating is my life, you know? I love it. but actually growing up, you know, now and like becoming more of an adult and getting older, it's like, um, I think I had a, like a bit of an identity crisis for a minute here. Um, probably 20, 25 to like 29, I was really kind of second guessing who I was, um, based off of how I was skateboarding, you know? So for a minute, I thought my identity, me, Ryan, was fully based and solely based on how I was performing on the skateboard. If I wasn't skating good, I wasn't a good person. If I was skating good, I was a good person. And um, it's taken me a while and a lot of soul searching to get to this point now where it's like skateboarding is just a byproduct of my life. Yes, I love it, I'll never stop, but it does not identify me and it doesn't define who I am as a human. So um, it's been a lot of growth, a lot of life growth through skateboarding. It's been really, really cool. It's crazy to think about from like 14 to, you know, like you just mentioned, 25, 26 years old, like you basically feels like you were living an accelerated like adulthood version of having a career and like yeah. your work life, right? Like that little self-reflection you just mentioned of like, 
where you're like, oh, my, my whole self-worth isn't defined by my career, no matter what that might be that you're into. Yeah. Um, so I think a lot of people probably can relate to that of like, all right, there's actually all this other stuff in my life that's, that's part of defining me. It's not just, you know, in your case, like skateboarding. And I'd be really curious. I was thinking about earlier too, like, what was that skate park like scene like when you were young? Cause you were, you had to be the big swinging dick in town and you just dominate. Like you were all the other kids just like, Oh fuck, here he comes. And were you just like running that show? Was it like a, was it like a click where you, you know, what was that scene like when you were younger? Well, I mean, dude, that's why skateboarding is so cool. It's like, it doesn't matter what part of the world I'm in, especially like when I'm home, like I can go to any skate park and feel like I belong, you know? And there's these skate parks all over the world every country, like everywhere has a skate park and um, you don't even have to speak the same language. Like skateboarding is so translated in the fact of like it, of work, you know, like I know what it takes for you to get to that point in your skateboarding career. I know what it takes for you to land that trick. So immediately we already have this like connection of almost like a brotherhood of like, man, I know what it took to get there. So I relate to you already. And skateboarders are fun, man. It's fun to be around. And dude, especially the skate park scene back in the day was like, was epic because kids were there and like people were there and there really wasn't any clicks. You know, I think it's a lot more clicked up now. You can see, you can go mm -hmm. to the park and you can see five different groups and, you know, they're all dressed different. And, but at the end of the day, they're all skateboarding. So we still have that in common. I think the camaraderie is a little different nowadays than it used to be. Um, Social media has changed a lot in skateboarding. It's so instant access and, you know, you do a trick and everybody knows about it. So for me, like right now, I'm trying to film a video part for Red Bull and, uh, you know, trying to do all these tricks, like pretty much in secrecy. So it's like people don't know what I've done. And, and then you kind of just sit back and hope and pray that some kid that you've never heard of goes to that spot, lands that trick and puts it out on Instagram that night. And you're like, oh, dude, I got to go. I got to go replace that trick so um the actual art of filming a video part is a lot harder in skateboarding because of social media but that's also what makes it super sick and it lasts forever you know i think video parts for skateboarding is is really our our lasting art you know you can always go back and watch a full video part you're not always going to remember what that kid posted two weeks ago for a you know 10 second clip that got a lot of buzz, but then it just goes away. You know, you want something that's everlasting in skateboarding. And um, I don't think video parts will ever die in, in skating. Talked about art. One of my favorite parts about skateboarding is the art on the actual skateboard. Like how yeah. much that's for us as golfers. Like I love being able to piece together really cool head covers and you got to, you kind of get to show off your like personality a little bit. Like how important was that for you growing up? Like, did you like start to develop like your own style and like, is that a big part of skateboarding is like having a style of artwork? Um, yeah, it is, man. It, it really is. Cause it, it, it can translate who you are without a kid ever have, you know, meeting you. And um, for me, graphics have just changed over the years and, and they kind of adapt with your style. So like, you'll have a really good graphic artist who is, you know, and in, in, I guess a in-house employee at these companies and you kind of become friends with this guy and he kind of understands what your lifestyle is, what you're into. And like for a long time, like my first, my first pro models were like, cause I live at the beach. So it was like, there'd be sharks or it'd be like me swimming. My first graphic ever was like me swimming. And I had like a old digital camera and I'm taking a selfie underwater. This is way before selfies were even a thing. I was 13 years old, you know, and there's a big shark behind me and like it identified the kids. So like, I was selling boards to kids. And then as I start growing up and getting older, you know, it's more like clean graphics. I like, I like a white board with a graphic in the center just because for my mental and like when I'm actually skating and flipping the board, I don't like seeing craziness under my feet. Wow. I want to, I want to focus on just the movement. And I know if the top of my board is black and the bottom is white, I know when the board's back to where it needs to be, you know, if it's too crazy or if I have an all black board, then I kind of get lost. I don't understand where, what's going on. Um, so you kind of just find things that you like, you know, a lot of my graphics now have uh, religious, um, religious plays on them. A lot of Jesus boards and, um, and things of that nature. A lot of my dog, you know, like just things that are super personal to me that I care about and, and I believe in. And 
um it's cool yeah they just kind of the graphics change as you change as a human you know and and what your what your likes and dislikes are and um but yeah it's a huge part you know and you you also want to have something that's appealing to a kid when he walks into the skate shop and he sees a wall of a hundred boards what's going to make him pick your board you know like hopefully he likes you as a skater and that's enough but if that doesn't work maybe the graphics cool enough to like catch his attention right hmm it's such a cool part it's amazing of amazing how much goes into it right and for us we're a bunch of idiots that just don't know anything about this sport like i, I mean did you ever skateboard frankie i like tried to like get on them and kind of go down the street never went to a skate park like always thought like that only existed in the movies in california like lurch I we thought... were saying before dude that like before you came on we were like you're you have to be the least skateboardy guy in the world maybe <laughs> Well, so, I mean, when Sheckler was coming up, it was like, we're roughly the same age and like Tony Hawk was big. So you were like kind of getting into it and I was kind of getting into it. And then you were the big name coming up and I was like, you know, this is insane. And I didn't put it together. Like, and, you know, or just forgot, like you were eight when you started at 13. It's like, it's crazy. You've been doing it that long and still pro like props to you. That's just amazing. But I remember when I was a kid, I got a Nash skateboard and yeah. I was like, and some of my buddies were good. Like they were in like the surfing world and like one got sponsored by like Rusty and like they were, but I was, I'm just, it didn't work for me. Like I, I had that. No way board. it works for you. And then I got, I got a sweet longboard, which was actually really fun to cruise on that I could somewhat cruise, but on a downhill, man, you get the speed wobbles, you bail into somebody's yard and eat oh, it. Yeah. And I would try to follow my buddies around, but no, like, I mean, I tried to drop in once I thought I was, I thought I was dead, you know, like, and it was, it was maybe a foot vertical before it started. It was like, I guess a quarter ramp or whatever you call it. Yeah. Um, no, but yeah, I'm, I'm not a skateboarder by any means, <laughs> but it, it, it is, I admire those that do it. It's like singing for me. You can hear my voice is horrible. It's baritone. It's like something that I'm so far away of being adequate at. I'm amazed that others can do it. And so um props to you for doing what you do on that damn thing even a kick foot man that's a broken neck for me like i'm just i don't even know how you get a flat board you know wiggle your toes a little bit it pops <laughs> up and, and flips around like that's it just doesn't work it's magic right all. when you watch it, it in slow motion it it's magic it, it it's, is. it's something to me that i can't wrap my head around like i i know how tiger woods can hit a golf ball like you like we're able to attempt that like we can't even attempt half the things that they they do so that to me makes it that other that's like it's magic it literally feels like <laughs> it is magic it is well said it's well magic. that's like that's that's the reason um that's like a perfect segue segue for me is like that's why i like golf that's why i love right. golf um i'm borderline obsessed with golf like i have the same bug for golf that i have for skateboarding you know wow. like, awesome. if i if I could take my clubs on every trip I went on, I would, you know, but like, I have to remember, it's like, I can't be on a, on a Red Bull tour that they're paying for everything to go on and take, you know, take a, a day to go hit 36 holes. Like all I want to do is 36. I just want 36 all the time. And um, it's because I'm addicted to that feeling that one good shot, you know, the one good shot, the shot that makes you come back. And that's the same with skateboarding. It's like, I could be working on a trick and it could take me, you know, could take me an hour to figure out this trick, but I get it, you know, and I get it one time and maybe it's not that good. Maybe it's a chip that's like 15 feet away from the pin. But if I keep working on that, I'm going to get my chip five, hopefully within three, hopefully dunk it, you know, eventually. And it's like, and I'm not unrealistic thinking that that can be something practiced and, and done every time, but I do see that I can get better at golf. And I've been getting better at golf because of learning and, and really, retaining the information that I get from better golfers than myself. And that's still why I like to skate with dudes that skate different things than I skate. Cause I still pick up, I'm a very visual learner. So um, if you were telling me how to swing over this, I might retain some of the information. If we're in person and you show me and I watch your hips or I watch your hands, I can pretty closely, pretty quickly imitate what you just did. And um, that's really what, keeps me going in golf and like dude i just i tore my i snapped my acl a little over a year ago um had to get a full like full surgery they took my hamstring to rebuild my acl and um it was a nightmare it sucked you know that's i've broken over 12 bones but like actually snapping the acl was like one of my worst injuries 
um, just the recovery. Recover recovery is brutal. But at six months, you know, I wasn't cleared to skate. I wasn't cleared to surf. I begged my doctor, like, if I wear a knee brace and I don't swing through my knee and I don't move my hips, can I golf? And he's like, yeah, you can golf. So I was golfing three days a week and just like working on an upper body, just working on my arms, working on my swing and um, gradually started getting my knee to rotate with my swing. And, and now, you know, over this last, I guess, half a year, you know, I've probably put in 80 to 90 rounds and I'm just, I'm obsessed. It's crazy. It's awesome. And the um, injuries aren't as bad too. So when you're perfecting that like 70 yard wedge shot to score, you're not going to break your wrist or anything like that. Which for is, sure. And I'm yeah. trying to go golf tomorrow but I woke up today and my neck's all jacked from this last trip that I went on. And I'm like, I'm not thinking, Oh, I can't go skate. I'm like, dude, I can't golf tomorrow. There's no way. So like <laughs> now, now I'm getting bummed when I can't golf, you know? And, and I think it's really cool. And I also think it's a really, um, it's an awesome sport to, to figure out how to become present and how to, how to remain present and how to let go of bad shots and like keep Oof. it moving, you know, and it's really hard. And some days I can't do it. Some days I'll, I'll go out, have a terrible round, and I leave and go home at eight, you know, I'm just over it. But other days I can, I can power through that. And um, yeah, I don't know. It really relates to me in the, in the aspect of like skating, what it takes to learn a trick, what it takes to get a good golf shot, what it takes to have a good round, it takes to have a good contest. Like they're very, very similar in my mind. Are there, uh, are there any similarities in like, um, you know, in golf it's, it's, often talked about and wrestled over of trying to bring your range game to the golf course. If people on the driving range can get in a groove and hit good shot after good shot, and then you get on the first tee and you're a little jittery, you hit a horrible drive, you're out of sync and you can't bring it. Is there any of that in like skating in like, man, I can, I can nail this stuff, you know, when I'm at this park or when I'm at home or whatever, but like trying to figure out how to bring that to competition or whatever, is there any similarities to that or is, or is it hundred percent? No, hundred percent. You know, I'll, I have, uh, been blessed enough to have a private skate park here in, uh, in San Clemente and, um, I'll go there and I'll have the best sessions ever. I'll work on tricks that I'm like, Oh yeah, this is going to be a contest trick. And I'll land it 10 times in a row and I'll get to an event. And when it's game time and normally I thrive off of that, you know, that pressure, some days it just doesn't work, dude. Like some days you, some days I cannot get my brain to communicate with my feet, like and skating so fast twitch, you know, it's so fast twitch. And it's just like golf. It's like, yeah, it's all tempo. But once you're at impact of the ball, hands have to be right. Shoulders have to be right. Hips have to be right. Like there, there's these intricacies that are so important to golf. Same with skateboarding. It's all, it's, it's millimeters of movement that can differentiate between a land and, and a bail. And, you know, I'm not a big driving range guy. Like I'll go get a lesson every once in a while at the driving range. I'll go hit balls for fun, but I'm not going to the range to like practice. I'd rather go to, you know, the hideaway in, in uh, Palm Springs and just go play three days of 36 holes in a row and actually learn on the course. I, I do a lot better when I'm actually learning when it's for something, you know, like for a score, I can, I can take it more serious at the driving range, man. It's like, it actually probably hurts my game to be honest. Cause I'm like, Oh, I'm, this is good. I'm great. I'm great. I'm going to shoot low tomorrow. And then I shoot a, you know, 105 and I'm like freaking out. <laughs> That's just so incredibly relatable. Just the whole, you know, Folks, there is big news from my favorite home security company, Simply Safe, just launched their new wireless outdoor security camera. We've talked about this thing a few times, but it's brand new. Uh, the system that U.S. News and World Report names best home security system of 2021 just got even better. This brand new outdoor security camera engineered with all the advanced tech and security features you want and need to help you uh, and keep you and your family safe. It has an ultra wide 140 degree field of view. That sounds like a lot of degrees. Uh, an enormous amount of degrees, so you can keep watch over your entire yard. It's got 1080p HD resolution with an 8x zoom. That's eight times it zooms in. You can zoom in and clearly see things like faces and license plates to capture critical evidence. That's always creepy to read. Uh, it has an easy-to-remove rechargeable battery, so it doesn't need an outlet. It can go anywhere on your property. Simply Safe is everybody's favorite home security company. My parents have been using Simply Safe for years. 
They've been safe. They can't believe how simple the entire operation was to set up. It's not a hassle. There's no like crazy complications with it. It's incredibly simple. That's why they call it Simply Safe. That's why they're so popular. To learn more about the exciting new Simply Safe wireless home uh, outdoor security camera, visit simplysafe.com slash foreplay. Simply Safe is celebrating the new camera by offering 20% off your entire new system and your first month of monitoring service free. That's right. You get 20% off your new system, first month monitoring service free when you enroll in interactive monitoring. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash foreplay. We want our families, friends, our homes, everything to be safe. So go check out simplysafe.com slash foreplay. When did, so when did you pick up golf? How many years I mean, ago? I mean, I've been golfing now for like 12 years, but okay. not seriously. Like not seriously until about the last, I'd say I really started getting like, you know, got my handicap and like started really trying to get better four years ago. Um, and it was crazy because it's like I, I started getting super into it and then I'll, I'll travel for months on end, you know, and I don't really have time to golf. So then I'll come back to it um and then try again and like i could not get out of that 15 16 range handicap for almost two and a half years and actually this injury this injury was crazy because i started like knowing that i couldn't hit how i wanted to hit and i lost a lot of distance but i became more like composed as a golfer because i already knew i knew i couldn't i couldn't blast the ball so i was just like ah well i'll just play I'm like, I, I call it like old man golf, you know, like I watch these old timers go out there and they ain't drive, they're driving 200 yards, but you know, they're shooting a, a 74 or 75 just cause they're super consistent and they're not chasing these Eagles. They're like, they're cool with par and they're cool with a birdie sprinkled in here and there. And I started doing that dude, and, you know, in six months brought my handicap down to a 10. And so at this point, I'm just like, if I really take this serious, if I got a lesson, you know, if I could, if I could get a lesson once a week, man, I could probably get down into the single digits. And um, I'm just stoked to have something like golf. You know, I'm stoked to have another challenge at, uh, at this point in my life, a challenge that's fun, you know, all my friends golf. And um, it's just something I really, really enjoy. Right. It makes travel, you know, it also makes travel better, right? We always say, yeah. I think the best, the best, pieces of the places we travel to are often on golf courses for sure like when we went to bandon dunes like oregon's beautiful but bandon has to be the best property in all of oregon it just has to be i mean and that's how it goes you know these golf courses especially the nice ones are are pretty much the staple of anywhere you go and i i've right. never realized that i've always heard about people going on golf trips and i was like man that sounds that sounds interesting and then i started going <laughs> on a few golf trips and i'm like oh yeah, this is what it's all about. I'm like, I almost want to go on my skate trips and then stay four days extra to like actually go experience what it's all about, you know, go golf. It's funny, bro. Like my girlfriend makes fun of me. She's like, all you care about is golf and skating. I'm like, I'm like yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love you, but yeah, I, I do enjoy my golf and skating. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty much our entire lives is based around going to different you know places and and playing golf courses, and it's amazing golf too. How you you actually learn the like world through golf. You're like, oh, that's where this course is. That's where that course. That's what this type of. I actually know what the terrain in North Carolina is like because I'm a I'm familiar with the sand hills because that's what the courses are like there. Like it's right. you learn all that through the game of golf. Um, we were talking before uh, this morning too. You know, you've you've used some great terminology already, gnarly. We're not guys that can use that, but we were trying to figure out, you know, people think like shred the gnar when they think of snowboarding and stuff. Um, is <laughs> stomp the bolts a real thing? Like, do have you have, have do people say stomp the bolts? I mean, in a in a, like a, a kind of a roundabout way, you know, like a lot of things in skateboarding, you want to land bolts. So, you know, stomp the bolts could work you normally I would just say that was bolts and if you that say was that was bolts then they know like they know it was stomped out it was good so it pretty much means it means the same thing but it's like that was bolts yeah is that like that a better was flushed? way to say is that similar to like that was flushed like yes. that was bolts 100 100 we need terminology for golf right because like 
like some i don't know man like you guys just make skateboarding so cool hitting the links makes me want to claw my eyes out it's just like you guys want to hit the links like we got do you do you say anything about golf like oh i'm hitting like pellets or something i don't know like is there anything that you say that i can start stealing i think you're just like i i think you guys are so immersed into the golf world that maybe it it seems like the terminology is not cool but like as a skateboarder like if i'm if i'm golfing and someone says oh that was pure like oh you flushed that one i'm like stoked you know see so like, that's good yeah, that point, feels man. good though it does to feel me, good. It's a good to me, point that's a good point yeah to me the golf terminology is is awesome and i think it's like it's like a, a time-honored like sayings you know like i i don't think you guys need I get like honored when someone's like, that was a pure shot. I'm like, thank you. You know, like, yeah, we're forcing it. We're trying to force thanks. it a little bit. I think. Or like golf shot, you know, they're like, that was a golf shot. I was like, yeah, sick. You know, like I get psyched on that. So I don't oh, know. Sick. I think the terminology is cool. You know? Awesome. I'm locked and loaded for the terminology for the rest of my life. Now that's all, all you need is like that one cool guy to tell you it's cool. And then that's cool forever. So <laughs> we're fine. Yeah, we if you don't know already, like, Frankie's just a mental head case on the course, on the podcast, everywhere. It's a beautiful mind in there, but it is a roller coaster <laughs> of emotions. Yeah, Man, my I'd, skateboard, I'd... my my skateboard would just be paint splattered all over the place. <laughs> if it was trying to describe like my personality and my mind, what I'm seeing at all times. It's just different colors, colors splashed explosions. Everywhere. You'd put a new uh, coat of paint on every day. With like one would be like happy go lucky sun. And then the next day would just be just Dark. a murder on the <laughs> <Yeah>. back. <laughs> yeah. Almost like a, a mood ring. That would be crazy. <laughs> yeah. if you could have a mood <laughs> ring board or like mood ring golf ball. That's just how you know your day is going to go. Yeah, man. So I mean, dude, it'd be super sick. Like if you guys ever do a bar stool, like golf tournament or anything, I'd love to be on you guys' foursome. It'd be super fun. Dude, Let's go. Absolutely, man. Like you Done we gotta deal. play around with you, man. We we do these things where we're always playing golf with you know music stars and athletes and celebrities. Like we we you got if you even have like a foursome of guys that you play with, like maybe there's a skateboarding crew that you you know that like maybe you can take us on a match if you got some good sticks, some good players in there. Like we're all in. We're all in on playing with you. I mean, there's some good guys, but I'm not gonna. You, you guys, you guys are in the golf world. We. Uh, oh, we're not we're, good though. No, no, no. Yeah, don't. No, don't. we're not very good. We, uh, one of the guys who's now on the podcast just broke 100 for the first time a month ago. Right. So These golf we're like common men. Kind of yeah. Okay. Well, no, I mean, dude, obviously, like, golf, golf is just fun, man, and it, and it's, it's such a beautiful way too to like be able to get to know someone that you don't know. You know, it's like there's no better way to understand someone's personality or who they are, how they freak out, you know, how they get excited than a four hour round of golf, you know? And um, I think that's what has been one of my biggest like favorites of golf is like golfing with new people and um, getting to know who they are, getting to know their personalities, likes, dislikes. It's like a real intimate way to like figure out who someone is and then also like have fun golfing and talk about golf and talk about, you know, whatever you want to talk about, listen to music. Like, um, it's just, it's cool, man. There's, there's so many similarities to skateboarding and, and until like, until you actually try it as a skateboarder, you know, um, you don't really understand it. Like my girlfriend, it's so funny. She's like, I can't believe you can just like watch golf. You just sit down and watch golf. I'm like, yeah, what do you mean? Like, yeah, look out, look how he swings the club. Like, look at his hips. She's like, ah, walks away, you know? And I'm like, ah, I'm uh, obsessed, you know? It's the same way I watch skateboarding. It's like, I'm just intrigued, you know? I'm intrigued to get better and intrigued to learn more about the sport. And um, yeah, I really like submerse myself in, in information. So you sound you like a get... purist too. Are you out like, like when you go play, do you like with your three other bodies, you got to force them and you out like just everybody grabs a box and like, are you out like blasting tunes when you play on a card and whatnot? Like, how do you go about your round? Um, I go about my round, like pretty mellow. I like to drive, you know, I like being the driver. I don't know what, why, but I, I, I enjoy yeah, that. You and Riggs um, can't ride together. Then, yeah. Oh, but I'm cool with someone else driving. It's just like, if I had the option, I would drive, but. Um, I don't mind, I don't mind riding passenger. I'm not really blasting music. You know, I have, I have music on, but like just enough so that like our cart can hear it. I'm not one of those guys that pulls up at the, at the tee box, like Good super ar yeah, arrogant, you know, 
Um, I just take it serious because there's so much history in golf too, you know, like I, the same way there's history in skateboarding and video parts like we talked about earlier, like the history in golf is such a like gentleman's sport and it's just like, you know, it, I, I do dress up, you know, like even if there's no dress code, I'm wearing, you know, pants, belt, shirt tucked in, you know, like um, a lot of times people look at me crazy because I'm fully tatted up. So if I'm wearing shorts out on like a really nice, and sometimes I like to do that just to like get some of the stuffy air out of Hell these yeah. country, country clubs. It's yeah. like, dude, I, I've earned my right to be here. You know, like my tattoo, I'm tattooed head to toe, like, you know, neck down. And um, I get a lot of crazy looks, but you know, it's almost funnier that way. It's almost funny. Dude, it's great. My, uh, our boy, uh, Anthony, he's, uh, I believe like stage manager for Dave Matthews band is his title. Okay. And he's similar, man. He's like, you know, he's, he's artistic. He's tatted up like you wouldn't believe. And he's the biggest golfer in the world. And we always laugh about him fucking rolling in and his tucked in polo and his khakis. And then he's got all his tats and it's like, yeah. it's just so counter golf, but it's awesome. Cause he loves every second of it. Yeah. You know, and it's like, we'll get those, I'll get those looks. And then, you know, uh, a guy will come up or a member will come up and you know, say something about them. And then I'll just engage in a conversation. And he's like, Oh, you know, like they, I think, I think there's a stigma with tattoos on the golf course for sure. Like, like we don't belong, but then like, I'll start talking about golf and like, you can, you can hear the passion for it in my voice and like how much I actually really love it. And, and then all of a sudden we're, we're relating on, on a subject that we, we both enjoy. So, you know, it's, it, I guess it's just don't, don't judge people before you actually hear them out or speak to them. You know, you never know. Totally. 100%. Well, you got to, uh, we got to have you find three, I think three pals. Cause we do the scramble. We play as a scramble. And again, yeah. we're not, we got like a couple fives. We got like a 10 and we got a 25 or so. So it's not like we're absolute sticks. Anything could happen out there. That's a good, but that's a good scramble group. We it is a, a lethal good team. We've been, we're undefeated. Yeah. Like we have to, yeah, we, we can't, <laughs> We're, we're undefeated, undefeated but we've been playing. We've been playing against one guy most of the time. We play against PGA Tour guys, so we played ah. against Kevin Kisner, Pat Perez, Joel Damon. We play against them. You know, they get to play their own ball, and we get to play as a scramble. We did play the Country Stars, and we beat them. Um, but point is, if you find three, you know, three buddies, you get your little golf group out there. We make a we make a video, put it out for the people of us playing a little match. You guys, let me know when I can get that foursome together today. I, I like, let's do it. Let's actually make that happen. We're, we're down and we're around the same handicaps as well. So it would be actually really, really fun. We're awesome. Down. Well, good. Yeah. They're going to run circles around us when it comes to banter and just, I mean, we're going to sound like the biggest, like the biggest fucking biggest dorks. Dorks. Total dorks. I'm going to be showing up with my pants on. This guy's tatted fucking <laughs> eyebrow down to to toe and i'm like i'm i'm in my pants and my pink college shirt God, we're, we're, we're already gonna lose we're gonna lose the visuals we're gonna lose the visual like we already are can losing. we get our iced tea please can we please get our yeah. iced tea out here and uh, you know it's tough we're gonna look like losers hey man Let's, no we're gonna have fun that's what it is we're gonna have fun it'll be a lot of fun man well, seriously, let's set it up. Let's play a match. People will love that. We'll have a good time. And, um, yeah, we appreciate it. We got to have you back on. We can talk off with you anytime. Bro, anytime you guys want me on, man, I'm, I'm around. And um, this was a blast, dude. It's, it's cool. This is the first time I've actually got to talk about golf, um, you know, or had, a, had an interview that was the, the topic was golf. So um, it's really cool um, to me. I really appreciate you guys' time. And, uh, yeah, man, I, I just think that, I think that once you get the golf bug, it's impossible to get rid of. It's damn right. It's the most impossible. Yeah, it's all you think about every time. Every time I wake up, I'm like, man, I wish I could swing a golf club today. And that's there's not many things like that in life that you can find, right? You found skateboarding and golf, and those two things are a beautiful combination. I don't know how they combine, but they're a beautiful combination. Um, yeah. But God, man, it's it's the best sport ever. Everybody works, got giddy man. when you were like pured it. Like when someone says pured it and you actually hit a pure shot, it's like going at the stick. One, it feels like a miracle. And two, it is just the best feeling in the planet to see your ball some, just going right at it. There's just something about like the way it's picked too. It's just like, you just know, you know, that that's what I love. And that's what I got addicted to is like, you know, when everything was in tune, when everything just like, boom, and it's straight and it's going 
And like, you don't even need to look, you just know you got it, you know, like, um, it's the same way I like to do kick flips, you know, like I've done it so many times that like a kick flip is just like second nature. Now, some are still off in my mind, but to like, you know, a, a person that's watching, it's like, Oh, that was a good kick flip. But like, you know, when it's like, when it's money and obviously like, I don't know, sticking a, sticking a ball, you know, a foot from a pin from 160 yards out is it, bolted. unbelievable. It's a right. feeling of like, sometimes yeah, I'll, bolts. I'll <laughs> bolts. sometimes I'll think about like everything that went into the production of this golf club. Like I finally utilized it, right? Like I hit it right <laughs> on the yeah. center of the club face, the shaft bent the right way. I yep. finally did when they sat around that, that, that when they had a meeting and they sat around and they said, let's figure out how to make a golf club as good as it could be. I finally did what they intended that one yep. time you just nut it right in the center. You're like, I want that feeling forever. I know, bro. That's what keeps, that's what keeps you coming back. Oh. 100%. Yeah, Tough to explain to the girlfriend. That's for sure. It just doesn't make any sense. But bro, I bought, I bought, <laughs> I bought her golf clubs. Cause I'm like, okay, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm gonna make this happen. Like we're gonna we're gonna yep. start golfing together and take her to the driving range and and they're righty set. I, like I know she's a lefty, right's lefty, but I didn't, I was like she never said anything about swinging a bat lefty or anything. So I'm like ah oh, she's probably righty. Get her right clubs and she's not having fun. And I'm just like oh man. And then we're at Top Golf. We've only gone once to the actual driving range by my house. And then we're at Top Golf over this weekend in in uh, Denver. And she starts swinging the lefty club and just puring the ball. I'm like, oh, you're lefty. She's like, don't oh. get excited. Like, I don't want lefty clubs. I'm like, I just want to go off with you so bad. Like, <laughs> uh, it's, hard to get, it's hard to get the girls to want to go. But um, mm -hmm. maybe I can get my homies and their wives to, like, start, start their foursome and get it going. But it's fun, <laughs> man. I'll never stop golfing. Hopefully. I love that. I love that. All right, man. Well, let's uh, let's set up a match. You know, yes. we'll do this again. We'll talk some golf, and we'll uh, we'll make it happen. All right, boys. Appreciate your time. All right. Thank you. That was yeah. fun. Pleasure to right, meet you, man. man. Yeah. All right, guys. Catch you later. See ya. Thank you. Peace.